We're live. Hi, and welcome to Dungeon Damsels, Zeal Zaddy, many others collaboration. I'm Tiffany, your DM. I am known on Twitter as Dungeon underscore Dam Dungeon underscore Damsels. I run my own homebrew campaign. Um, that's called Dungeon Damsels. But tonight I wanted to do a special shout out to all the dads in my life. And so I thought, hey, let's do, I don't know a bunch of D&D &D dads, let's bring them together and do a one shot. So let's start with introductions. How would we start with Scott? Hi everybody, I'm Scott. Um, you can find me everywhere at Zealzaddy. I'm actually one half of Zealzaddy. The other half is kind of a silent in the backgrounds person. Which makes no sense because he was a radio personality for 25 years, so uh, just a Luddite. I'll get him on here soon enough. Uh, you can find our products. We make a lot of products for um, a, a setting we, that we are doing that's urban called Vatishar. It's on Drive-Thru RPG. All the pieces are there. Um, we do one piece a week, and it's sort of what we call a drip strategy, um, releasing the setting one little bit at a time. A lot of deep dives in NPCs and magic items and things like that so check that out and give us a follow and i am a dad three kids i don't know if we have to get into all that <laughs> <laughs> well if you want to share your your status as a dad and i'm all about it so okay go for it all right let's go to morgan oh me yeah. hello travelers i am mindfully mondays morgan uh my pronouns are he him you can find me on social media at Mindflay Mondays on everywhere except Twitter. On Twitter, it's at Mindflay Mun. Uh, I'm the founder of MindflayMondays.com. It is where you can hire professional dungeon masters to run games for you and your friends uh, or your team or your children. We do all kinds of things from birthday parties to office events to just, you know, normal sessions with, with, a, with a group of people. Uh, we also have t-shirts on Amazon for D&D related stuff. And I have several subclasses and a subrace on the DM Guild. And finally, I have a podcast called Mindfully Mondays Podcast. Uh, you can check us out. We drop episodes every Monday uh, or almost every Monday. Sometimes if people are on vacation or something like that, we don't. Uh, I am a dad of four children. Plus, we took on my wife's sister's kids. So I have a total of seven children in my house at this time. So <laughs> that is my dad status. And I'm just... As always, excited to play with Scott and Tiff, and really excited to play with two two new people for me. So, <laughs> all right, thanks, Morgan. Go to over to to Gum. Hey guys, I'm Gum. You can find me pretty much everywhere as Gum Mallow. Um, I run two weekly tabletop games. Uh, most of the time, I am off tabletop games for the month of June, at least off running them. We will be kicking off our new campaigns, Calternia and Junk City Jumble, starting in July. And as our feature for that, we just put out the new race we developed um, on Itch, and you can find me there as Gumello, just like everything else. I am a dad of two, um, and they're getting too old. Yeah. Too old. My daughter is graduating eighth grade next week. It's too much they grow up fast yeah they do um i and last but not least we got tom and i'll do a little bit of an intro for him if you have followed my campaign for a long time the original players were invited because they did theater with me and and um tom has done theater with me i dragged him into it <laughs> all right tom do you have anything else you want to tell us tell us about yourself it wasn't until about three minutes ago, I just figured out it wasn't just an audience of us that was going to be part of this game. <laughs> <laughs> and I think that's why I'm going to play the grandfather tonight. Um, you know, I have two kids of my own, uh, 24 and 22, which I think is another reason why I get to play the grandfather because not yet, but potentially I think I'm going to be the first grandfather in this group. So. Awesome. Don't oh, mind me as I eat my dinner. I eat a lot <laughs> on the stream. <laughs> it just happens to be right where we eat dinner. Um, and for those of you who are, are wondering, I do have a good relationship with 
with my own dad. I just don't want to play Dungeons and Dragons. With <laughs> 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 it's he doesn't like board games, and I'm just like, I don't want to. I don't want to poke that bear. So Wait, let's... he doesn't like board games. What? It's really weird to me because he's like a strategy type person, and so I'm like, why do you like? But every time we're like, hey, dad, let's play board games. He's like, nah. I'm like, okay. So he does, yeah. You know what it is? He doesn't see you as a challenge. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he definitely can outlogic me. So <laughs> let's uh, get started into the dad jut. The jet dad jut. Deep in the evergreen forests, along the sweeping mountains of the Greyback Ridges, lies the sleepy town of Tillage. It's the type of place where you know your neighbor's neighbor, your cousin, that stray dog that's always around, and uh, it's the simple farmer folk. The dusty streets are mainly populated by humans, dwarves, and halflings, and a couple of gnomes. Their burgermeister is Heron McGuffey, a rotund and happy, albeit a bit yellow, halfling. It's a bald head and a ring of springy graying hair and a fine mustache that's and a suit that's just slightly too small for him. This tiny town has a big fish too. The Dolomites, crown princes of the social ring in Tillage and the surrounding villages. The Dolomites are a family of dwarves who are attractive, smart, and disgustingly rich. They live in a gaudy mansion in the center of town and run the Shimmerfall Resort at the edge of the nearby lake. They also love to remind you how rich they are. There also are antagonists, so I'll give you the rundown of them. We got Grafton and Miss Corthia, who are the parents. They have two daughters and three sons. The first daughter is Maria, who is known for being smug, crafty, and has a pungent... Oh, oh dang. It's not pungent. Um, she likes gambling. Second penchant. son... Oh, pungent. yes. A penchant for gambling. Uh, the first son is Silton. He's fast with words and faster with his hands. The second son is Cliff. He's large, muscular, not bright, not the brightest, but smart enough to know when you're making fun of him. Third son is Taryn, a little terror, and Snipe, who has enough charisma to get, to get away with it. And then lastly, they have Roxia, who is a bit of an outcast of the family and the only one who is is, is decent. She was born blind and is largely kept outside of the public eye, so you don't see her around very often. <clears throat> Things were going great for Tillage for, until recent years. The local Tinker family, the Cogs, so let's do a little bit of a brief intro on everyone's characters. So let's start with Grandpa. Grandpa Cogs. Uh, basically, it's not my fault what happened it had nothing to do with my deciding we could save a lot of time if we removed some protocols because we had to meet that deadline so it wasn't my fault totally within normal risk parameters it was just a shame that this happened um i'm really fond of our adopted son but i mean i heard his feelings once because he wanted to know more about rock gnome culture so i said why don't you go carve a statue of me and he came back with this. And I said, that's great. That looks nothing like me. What are you, stupid? And I was just telling the truth, and he got all mad. I don't understand why. And I'm just, I, I keep it around because, you know, he's special to me, so I lug it around everywhere I go. But really, it's 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 ugly. But I, I, I you know, I told him once. I don't have to tell him again. But bless his little heart for trying. Unlike my son, who is, you know, just tries to, just not live up to his potential. At least his son has a chance if he was to apply himself, but I go on. Oh, let's go down to Scott. Thanks, who Gramps. Is, <laughs> who is, <laughs> yeah, who is the the, um, the father and technically son of the grandpa. So. Yeah, I'm a father and a son. Oh my gosh. I'm the only one in the game that is that. Oh, and that's not true. Grandpa, well, I had a, had a father at some point. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm Benji. I am the father of these two adorable sons. One of them by blood, one of them adopted. Um, 
adopted, of course, because of an accident that kind of led to some issues that we had to resolve. But we've come to love him anyway, even with all his um, his interesting, uh, odd contributions to the family. Uh, but I love the way that the two of them are tinkerers and mess with um, the town inadvertently and almost almost all the time. Our water flume that we were creating, it totally flooded the town and created a huge problem for the family. But you know what? The town survived. We're doing okay. We did make some enemies out of out of that dwarven family across town that was mentioned earlier. I don't even want to mention their name. And the Burgermeister it does not completely hate us, just, you know, can't really side with us because, you know, you can't really side with the one that floods the whole town. When you're that round, you really don't have a side. That's fair. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's right, grand, granddad. <laughs> um, we'll go over to Trebar, played by Gum. That's me. I am Trebar Cogs, a inquisitive rock gnome artificer slash rogue um, and i spend a lot of my time ignoring what dad says no matter how much it's common sense because what kid listens to their parents right off the bat tell me about it um when i'm not ignoring dad actually that's not true it's probably still part of the process i am uh, chasing vargos sneakily to see what he's up to but he's not helping develop the giant cannon that i carry <laughs> okay, and we got uh, Bargos, played by Morgan. Bargos is the adopted son to the family. He still hasn't quite figured out why they adopted him. He, he knows that it was kind of like put on them to adopt, but he always feels like maybe it was just just because they had they they were, they were told to, they needed to take a kid in when the they flooded and it destroyed the orphanage. Uh, but they always really kind to him for the most part, other than grandpa dad saying his artistic designs were terrible. Uh, <laughs> he spends most of his time trying to fit in when he can. He's not as good at the tinkering as everybody else is, but he does often sneak off because he, he found a, a secret cave that nobody seems to know about. And in there he does his practice of his magic as well as his art. He likes to, paint on the cave walls and he thinks that he's alone he doesn't realize that his uh, adopted brother follows him and sees him doing it but he's he's a kind soul he's he's a dragonborn as well which makes him really stand out from the rest of the the gnome family <laughs> sorry i had myself muted all right now we'll come continue with the intro of things. We're going great for tillage until recent years. The local Tinker family, the Cogs, cobbled together a water park. People from three towns ever would come to see the wondrous creations that the Cogs had put together. Slides that slipped, spun, and swirled. Pools that would lap waves. Sprinkler parks for the little ones and sunning spot for those who wished to lounge. Everything was running smoothly until the boiler for the large-scale hot tub suddenly burst apart and flooded the water flue. The water pump system failed. The whole town, including its crops, was flooded, devastated, and basically broke. The town required each family to adopt a child. And in the Cogs' instance, they adopted Bargos. The Cogs now live outside of the town and pay rent to grandpa's ex-wife bonnie <laughs> bonnie <laughs> damn it grandma <laughs> <sighs> because she's the only one that would rent to you after you destroyed the town and um so every so often she comes to inspect the property to make sure that everything's being maintained to her ex expectations today was one of those days Father and son team. So we got Benji and Trey Barr working in the workshop, one of many rooms that had been repurposed for such a thing and were head over heels over creating the big boom. Harebrained scheme to follow them, um, to blow up the mountain and get the ore of the inside to pay off some of the astronomical debt that the family has. <laughs> <laughs> 
so you're looking at the black you've been trying to look at this black powder it's it's volatile it's hard to handle but it wasn't enough for the mountainside the rock was too dense just so when one of you got hands on your hands on nitroglycerin you had to try it <laughs> just a little bit just had to try it so wait so even... what, is, what is that you got there what does that do uh, you know, I, I was told, all right, so, so I heard a rumor and we're walking around town that if you take a few drops of this and flick it at people, they blow up. So oh, I thought. Oh, well, you're definitely I, not doing that. We, no, 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 no. So we'd want to do it to people, but the mountain? Uh, why do you want to blow up the mountain? We don't need to blow up the mountain. We already flooded the town. No, no, no. It's, it's a controlled explosion. Was the flood a controlled flood? I just want to make sure that we're talking yeah, apples to peaches. It was supposed to be. <laughs> we know better this time. We can put up barricades and make sure that don't that, you know the rocks don't rain on down people. Like, you put a blasting cap on it. <laughs> yeah. See. Yeah. Um, how about Benji? Roll an intelligence check or a tinkering check, whatever you want to do. Is fine. Tinker. <laughs> What'd you get, Scott? Oh, I thought he was I thought it was him. Nope. Oh, yeah, she's no. a Benji. Oh, I'm Benji. sorry. <laughs> I'm not used to being called Benji yet. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Well, it was your mother who named you, so oh, obviously. I got a nat three. Oh, okay. You are having a hard time convinced. You know, you're like, I don't know how we can control this. This seems really dangerous. But there is that Tinker's Fire in you, and you kind of really want to try it. Uh, gum. Mm. I think Trayvon. we should try one drop first before we go to multiple drops. <clears throat> Just to see what it does. Okay. And somewhere okay. safe, not on the... No, Im immediately I will take a drop and flick it at the wall. <laughs> you, okay, yeah, yeah. You flick it at the wall, and then... <laughs> just, just from, like, a little drop. Um, how about you guys make dexterity saves to... <laughs> dive out of the way. Oh, this, in this room? Right, oh, it's getting better, two. Nat 2. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Tiffany, am I in this room? Um, you are... Where did I put you? I put you... Probably in your chair, Granddad. Relax. You're out back. Yeah, you're out back drinking beer or whatever you want to drink. That works. Yeah, and you hear this explosion. So, I mean, because, like, you're not going to not hear an explosion. I, so. I can totally see you're talking to your ex-wife as she's like, I'm here to inspect the house. Oh, everything's fine. Boom! <laughs> <laughs> So those who you got under a DC twelve dexterity save, you yes. take nine points of damage, fire damage from nitroglycerin. Oh, ooh. Gonna have to pat out. Yeah, the yeah. I will immediately Definitely. start start patting and be like, "Oh, you no, you, you were supposed to move. You said to do it." Uh, <laughs> and like, so, I probably have burn marks and stuff in the middle yeah, of like getting ready to say singed. we're gonna. Oh, somebody needs to run to the outhouse. Make her think it was just gas. <laughs> you need to go. You need to go now. Outhouse, okay, outhouse. I'm going. And I will... Uh, I, will yeah. I will... I will slowly proceed to the, <laughs> the explosion from the... Did it blow a hole in the wall? Can I see it from outside? Yeah, so you were in the backyard, uh, which is kind of like a little bit of a, a lawn that they've carved out, and you're lounging there, and then you hear the explosion, and it's not like a new thing to hear an explosion. You kind of just tilt your head back and like look over. You do see that there is a hole in the exterior wall because the workshop is on the side of the house. A window or a door? <laughs> <laughs> You're like it's probably door, it's probably door sized. This stuff is. I'll immediately take a saw, 
and start cutting in the circle, the bl exploded circle, make it look like we're cutting a window. I will, okay. We're making I will improvements. Actually, I'd like to cast a spell, if I will. Okay. <laughs> Go. My idiot family <laughs> has once again destroyed my property. I will cast Unseen Servant. And, and have it go help with the repairs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, Scott, you're taking the saw to the... Um... To the exploded hole? Okay. And trying to trim hole. it to make it look like we're trying to make a nice window. <laughs> window? Okay, okay. Um, do you have proficiency with, like, carpenter's tools? Oh, no. Okay, so you're going to have to do a, a... Yeah, all right. So, make just... I don't know. Make, make a dexterity... Okay. Roll. I mean, it's and been then, going good. I went from a three roll to a two roll. This is likely to be a one. I mean, it's it's two and ones. Then, it's well. an 11. Okay, an 11. It wasn't that. I mean, you know how to, you know how saws work. So you're you going, you cut it. You're just <laughs> like, your <leg> off. <laughs> I don't know how. It's, a, it's like a weird shaped window. It's like in between door <laughs> and window. So you're kind of like, hmm. Tray bar. It's a bay window. Doing? <laughs> Um, I was told to go and run to the outhouse and pretend that it wasn't an explosion. It was, in fact, just whatever we had for dinner last night. <laughs> okay. I, I will wander over and start criticizing all the craftsmanship he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dad, if you think you can do better, and I turn the saw and hand, give him the handle... I you cast can give him a hand to pick up the saw and start like doing the work that was there before. Why are you doing it yourself? I wish you would have learned this stuff. You know, if you just spent <laughs> a little time, but no, too busy. And you, your unseen <sighs> servant, is it picking up the debris um, or is it helping you with this saw? It's making pie, it's, made, it's, it's sorting the debris into different piles so we can reuse it because we can't afford new material. <laughs> Okay, okay. Um, and then, uh, meanwhile, we'll just jump briefly over to Vargos <laughs> during the middle of this <laughs> whole incident. Uh, Vargos, you are over at your secluded, yes, in the thick of the woods, there's a waterfall. It is named Asmar's Landing. Not that it matters much to you, Vargos. Uh, you have come to know it as your own space to meditate and draw and think, to practice your katas and your druidic <laughs> magics. So uh, what are yeah. you doing here? I would say, you know, they were working on their project. I'm not skilled enough to really be a part of that. And so I just kind of snuck away while they're working. And uh, Bar Vargos has just been just painting doing like his thing he's he's looking at different animals out in the forest and he's like painting them on the wall practicing and just being himself being being his artsy self right now and then i'm assuming i hear the explosion you do hear the explosion it's uh, fine this is fine what do you do i should probably go home i should probably go home and check on them <laughs> okay. so you, you begin to gather your art supplies what i what i i, I don't usually take it with me because i don't okay. really like i i leave it there i, I kind of cover it up and hide it in the back of this cave and like that way you know nobody knows that i'm doing this and then i just kind of leave and when you look at the cave you can see all over these walls there's these different arts things from like dragons as I, as he imagines them to different forest animals actually a scene of this of the town below from like up here from where we you know like it's definitely from here the waterfall itself it's just all over like almost like uh like crazy graffiti wall art mm -hmm. but inside this cave all over the place and uh and then inside there also there's areas where he does do like the training where he's taking wood and he does know how to build some things and he has built like a little training training stuff in there so there's like areas for him to train and do things as well in there and he just takes one look at his his little hidey hidey hole, and then he turns and runs to head home to, to see what happened. Yeah. So you, as your so because of the vantage point that um, you're at at the at the um, 
the waterfall, you're kind of, you can see like down the ridge and down the pathway, and you can see a rider coming up on a pony. And uh, <laughs> so make a perception check. Uh, that would be a 13. You know, I mean, it takes you a minute to think about it because you're like, who would visit us? Everyone hates us. <laughs> And then you realize, oh, wait, it's that it's like it's the second day of the month. That means grandma's coming. <laughs> and you just heard an explosion. Grandma Bonnie. Grandma Bonnie. Yeah, grandma Bonnie is coming to do her inspection. So Gram and I, Grandma Bonnie. Grandma Bonnie. And you try to wave her down. Yeah. OK, so she um, comes. She rides up on her pony and she is <clears throat> a very i guess like astute and kind of like professional woman she always looks like really good she is a an attorney for like a high-end law firm mm -hmm. and um she's just always put together in like the picture of, of sophistication in in professionalism in a way and uh, so she rides up on her pony and then she says oh bargos Hello. How are and it's you? Like, it's a little awkward because she like, like I'm trying to I'm trying to stand like to where like she can't see the smoke. You know. Coming <laughs> up from the, you know? Make, make a uh, deception or performance check. Let's see here. Uh, they're both negative ones. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, grandma. Uh, that would be a four. <laughs> she kind of eyes you, and it's. It is a little awkward for you guys because she um, is like someone that she's how do you explain it? she's a little bit. Um, I mean, she's the ex-wife, so like it, things are just uncomfortable. And then you're the adopted child that she like wasn't a part of making that decision for. So you're yeah. just so <laughs> things are a little awkward. And you see her eye you, and even at your height. She manages to stare you down, being a dwarven woman on a pony, and just her, her like full like presence just kind of bears on you. And she says, "It's unusual for you to come and greet me." Oh, well, I was actually out in the woods, so I was just having a good old time, and I saw you riding up, and I thought I'd say hi. Oh, how lovely! You know, I do love the sound of the forest, birds, the waterfall. And the occasional explosion. <laughs> you know, you know how uh, dad and, and and brother and grandpa are. They like to build and tinker. I'm sure everything's fine. I just hope. I mean, I mean what are they going to do? Flood the town again? <laughs> <laughs> she actually, uh... like, usually she actually cracks a <laughs> smile at that. It's just it's like... I suppose the worst has already happened, and she... Don't try me. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, would you like me to walk with you? Uh, and she, she kind of takes a minute, and, and, like, you can see she's calculating it, and then she says, of course, yes. And I'll make sure I walk, walk a little bit. I'll walk at a normal pace, <laughs> but, like, a little bit less than... So that way she kind of has to, like, walk with me if I can get her to like you know s just slow down a little bit to give them more time to do whatever they're doing up there mm -hmm. and I'll just be talking about the different animals in the forest and telling her what I've learned and you know like an excited young teenager exploring mm -hmm. just you know things like that and I'll just try to keep her interested in the conversation so she doesn't realize that I'm trying to slow us down okay <laughs> make a general charisma check <laughs> The things I'm worst at. Oh, but not too bad. I, I rolled a 17 minus one, 16. Wow, okay, someone's going to get a decent roll. That's odd. She is a minus one in charisma. I'm a minus one in charisma. <laughs> well, this is a self portrait. I finally figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So she she's interested in what you have to say and. Um, <clears throat> especially when you talk about the birds that are around the area. Um, do you, are you just talking to her? Or do you have anything that you're showing her? 
just you know well you know i've been out here so long like there's certain birds that i've noticed nesting here like certain species some that are more rare than others and i'm like kind of trying to find those ones and point them out to her and, and show what i've learned about them you know because i i do study nature uh, and all that so it, yeah. nothing nothing in particular just you know certain things that i've noticed along this mountainside mm -hmm. and, uh... maybe talking about what they're you know when they're when they're talking when they're you know what those what those sounds mean what they're doing and what i've learned about that stuff Gotcha. We'll go back to our other team. Um, <laughs> so, Trey Bar, you, um, how are you going to use the outhouse to uh, <laughs> convince uh... <laughs> to make it look like gas was the problem? <laughs> Let me see what I got. <laughs> I actually thought the that the. Uh grandma was closer but or, She's or mom like mom. It, yeah you guys have a you have a little bit of time you have like it's like a 20 minute walk oh so you yeah. actually have a lot of time to try to figure this out i just go open the outhouse i thought she was here already you can come on out okay so so you open the outhouse <laughs> and it is covered in grease and stinks so bad from prestidigitation <laughs> I, I am like fully prepped that she is the one opening the door, that it is just a disaster in there. I'm like, no, 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 don't. It's just this wave of stink. And I, and I like the grease just slowly falls out the bottom. Make, I, make a constitution save. <laughs> this is not good. I don't make rolls. I miss rolls. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, which one of us? Bully you from okay. like, bully you, yeah. <laughs> Nine. Fifteen. Fifteen. Uh, yeah, you. It's. It's not enough to make you you bark, but you do kind of like wheel over a little bit. You're like, wow, that's bad, and so you have to kind of like back up, and you know how it like follows you, and yeah. Yep. Yeah, I can smell it down the hall. <laughs> like, you you need to get out of there. You you really need to get out. <laughs> you, you really need. To, Grandpa, you can smell it from the inside of the house. <laughs> it uh, walked it over. Sorry, Grandpa. <laughs> I kept telling you, you shouldn't put extra beans in dinner. I know you said the fiber is good for us, but this is what happens. That's my boy. Um, yeah. <laughs> and something that, that happens is... Um, as you're talking about what to do next, the floorboards of the house creak. The chandeliers above, or just like a light fixtures above, kind of sway. And it is canon that this house is haunted. It is. <laughs> there it is. That's that's the sound of the ghosts in the background. And so, um, you guys, all all three of you know exactly what this means and you look at each other as you i slowly look up at the like moving uh, light fixture and kind of all just grown at the same time it's real for initiative as um specters come out of the the walls me all three of you yeah 21 and then as they're fighting you see me and grandma just grandma bonnie just having a nice leisurely stroll Oh, look at those birds over there. <laughs> Plus 16. Eight. Okay. Um, Trey Bar, you got 17? 21. 21. Okay, yeah. Trey Bar, 21. Uh, Benji was 16. And then Grandpa... What was Grandpa 7? And 8. And eight. Okay. Sounds about right. Spectres... Uh, okay. All right, Trayvor, you're at the top of the round. You see two specters come in from opposite walls and surround you on either side. They're about 15 feet away from you. Okay, I am going to use my action to create my Eldritch Cannon for the day. Okay. What does that look like? Um, so 
It is ridiculously proportioned. It is, if you stood it on its end, it is taller than Trebar. Um, <laughs> but it has no weight, so he just carries it by a single handle and points it like a ship's cannon. Okay. Um, and then with it active, as a bonus action, I can use it like a flamethrower. Okay, yeah. Go for it. Uh, so Burn the house down now, right? <laughs> <laughs> if, if they are within a 15-foot cone, they have to make a dexterity saving throw. Okay, so you can get one, because they're okay. on opposite sides of you. Alright, so it is a DC 14 dex save. Ooh, rolled an actual 19. Okay. Let me see what... Uh, Alright, so it takes half damage, half of 2d8, so 8 plus 7. So, 7 points of damage. Okay. Oh, alright. So, I, I rolled for this. You unleash your your uh, flamethrower cannon in a workshop with nitroglycerin and black powder. Yep. So all of you, including the specters, will have to make dexterity saves to avoid more explosions. <laughs> Not a natural, but 20. Okay. I got a nat four. <laughs> I got a total of five. Okay. Um, just... <clears throat> All right, anyone who got under a 12 was going to take full damage. Okay, so that's um, nine points of fire damage if you rolled under a 12, um, and then halved if you rolled above. Oh, okay. Wow, my. Traybar's doing a number on me today. <laughs> it means that four or five damage for me. I'm trying to kill his five. father to take over. <laughs> Listen, he's really, really smart. He just doesn't know when not to do things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Your uh, Grandpa Cog, your unseen servant, is caught in the fire and dissipates. <sighs> Good help is so it. hard to find or see. <laughs> <laughs> Next is, is that your turn? Yes, that's my okay. turn. Next is one of the specters, and it, the one that you hit with the fire, it doesn't like being hit by the fire. I don't like it shaking my chandelier, but here we are. <laughs> <laughs> and it is going to uh, make a melee spell attack on you so i'm going to use protection on him so it's the attacks at disadvantage yes. thanks dad of course even though i set you okay. on fire that okay so it, with this advantage that's a four so uh, i don't think an eight is going to hit you it just kind of swipes and you manage to step out of the way as his ghastly hand comes down and <clears throat> just sitting there no no, we talked about this last time. <laughs> it just it just shows no matter how bad our kids hurt us, we're always there to protect them. That's right. <laughs> and now we're going to Benji. <clears throat> um, I'd like to at least know a little bit about this specter. So I would like to detect good, evil, and good, and find out if we're dealing with someone who's malicious. Or someone who's just chaotic. Okay. Maybe they're just mad we broke their house somewhere. <laughs> or, or that, yeah. Ew. So. Okay, so. Yeah. Roll uh, your uh, spell modifier. Okay. Whatever that is. And then tell me what you get. All right. So I can. That, it will just depend on how much information you manage to glean. Because you can tell. Um, Detect good and evil. We'll look at it. Yeah, I can do it as a, as just as an action with um, my uh, where is it? My divine sense. 
until the end of the next turn, you can sense anything affected by the Hallow spell. Oh, you can detect good and evil as an action until the end of your next and until the end of your next turn, you can sense anything affected by the Hallow spell or know the location of any celestial fiend undead within sixty feet that is not behind total cover. You can use this feature one time per long rest. So, I think it's automatic as far as good or evil. Yeah, you can tell that it's um, it's not registering as good or evil to neutral sort of thing. Okay. Um, and what did you roll for your, your oh. spell modifier roll? Let me just roll a die. Oops. Hold on, I rolled two by accident. I meant to roll one. Um, a 22. Okay. I mean, with the detection of good and evil, you managed to surmise that these are kind of, they're not exactly souls, but they're more of just like manifestations of um, emotion that took on a corporeal, somewhat spiritual form. Oh. And you sense that it's they're just kind of like general, like this is our home and we protect it sort of feelings that have attached themselves to the, the house. It's grandma's bad vibes towards <clears throat> us. <laughs> we really do need an exterminator around here. <laughs> is that your turn? Uh, yeah. Okay. Then it's grandpa's turn. I'm actually going to I'm going to go address the one uh, address the one closest to me and say, I know, I know it was an accident. We wanted to put in a new door and it just didn't work <laughs> out. We can fix it. It'll be fine. There's this is just a big misunderstanding <laughs> and try and deceive them to like, you know, this wasn't just because we were reckless. This was just a, an accidental renovation gone wrong. <laughs> okay. Um, make a persuasion check persuasion okay here we yeah, go make a persuasion check here we go here we go ed on the floor there yeah. we go yeah hi dc seven with seven. my three with my four point bonus that's an 11. <laughs> it looks at you and even you can tell that this ghost is sassing you like seriously you you put up you blew up a hole in the house <laughs> Yeah, jeez, Grandpa, why are you blowing holes in that? <laughs> <laughs> um, Grandpa gets blamed for everything. Right under wanna, that bus. Yeah. Come on, Grandpa. Do you want to do a bonus action? Yeah, I will um, cry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bonus action, man, cry. Justin, oh, no, I have nothing to do with this. <laughs> Feign death. <laughs> <laughs> okay after that is the second specter's turn which is the one that grandpa was talking to um and um it it does not feel sorry for you as it goes and makes its attack it rolled oh does a 12 hit i'm armor class 13 okay so 12 does not hit as it's you know, it, it will say that your tears just make it um, it laughs falter, a little too much. falter just enough for you to step out of the way. And what happens next is we're actually going to go over to back to Morgan and Grandma. Oh, God. Why is Grandpa so lazy? Is he always <laughs> lazy? <laughs> and then she begins to tell you this story about how he aspired to be like a grand musician at like the um, like the top theater and um, how years of rejection basically broke him down. So she rejected it, him more and left? Is, is that why he's always so mean about my creations? My, my statues and my art? You think? Maybe he's trying to put me down because he wants me to be ready for the world to be so cruel to me. And she she puts her hand on you and she says, 
no, I think he's just bitter so about that terrible? I was like, no, of course not. No, he's just a dick. He's just, <laughs> um, you know, he just has a hard time accepting where his life has taken him. Uh-huh. Just like he had a hard time accepting that I chose to be a career woman. And <laughs> I think he still loves you. I think, I think you, I think you do. He would have be better off if you were in his life. I'm trying to butter her up, but you butter know, I do, her believe, up. It. Make a, I do make believe it. I do make believe it. I do believe it. Persuasion check. Hey, that you, will be. <laughs> you may. You may be the first strangled son in our house. Yeah, I actually have a plus two of persuasion, yeah. <laughs> so that'll be an eighteen. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. She. For you, being so she, terrible at charisma, I'm doing. Yeah, all right. you're doing pretty good. Is she. <laughs> this, He's actually just as shocked that this is going well. He's like, wow. <laughs> she looks up at the, the, her, the sky and you can tell that um, she's not used to having like interpersonal conversations at all. She kind of shifts uncomfortably on the, the, the pony and says, well, I, I wouldn't be sure of, of that exactly. You know, we, we have a I, I live of with him. I live with him. He's better off with you. Uh, I know. I know that ship probably has sailed. I'm, I'm sorry, Grandma. I'm not trying to make you uncomfortable. You know, just just calling it like I see it. Um, make a another just charisma check. <laughs> yeah, because like you're you're beating down a wall that she's built. Well, I rolled an eleven, so it's a flat ten. So because I have a minus one to charisma. You can tell that she's hiding something. That like mm. there's something she's holding back. And that's but she doesn't say what it is. I won't push. I won't push. And now we're gonna go back to the top of the round with Trey Bar. Back <laughs> All right, in... top of the round. Yeah. Alright, so we got some weird ghosts here. Mm-hmm. Um and the one just took a swipe at grandpa. Yeah, but it missed. And the one, there's another one in front of me. And is there yeah. any way to angle to get them both? Um, <laughs> you would have to, you'd have to like back up and try to um, get them to like, you could back up towards grandpa and the other one could, could like potentially follow you. Um, you would get in an attack of opportunity because they're on exact off, they're like at, you know, it's like a 90, it's not even like a 90 degree. They're like at 180. It's just That's okay. exact opposites. I will. Uh, I'm gonna get upset that the the ghost is trying to hit Grandpa and ignore the one next to me and cast Thunder Wave at the one that's hurting Grandpa. Okay. It's outside, right? I think. I think or it's in the, the doorway. House. <laughs> there, they um, we'll say that one is in the doorway and of uh, the doorway that was made. Uh, and Perfect. And then the Except. other, yeah, and then the other one is um, inward facing, kind of like coming from the house. Okay, I would like the doorway one to go out the doorway with Thunderwave if I can. Okay. Okay. Uh, That's no. So that is a and DC. maybe crack some more of the wall to make it like a big long window, right? Bay window. We're going bay window now. <laughs> It was an awkward shake. It didn't work. <clears throat> that seems like an appropriate spell for you. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So DC 14 con save. Okay. Vector. It rolled a natural 18. Damn. Um, so it takes half as much damage. So I rolled seven for damage. So three. And all unsecured objects within the 15 foot cube are automatically pushed 10 feet away from me as part of the spell's effect. Okay. Yeah. So you release this wave of magical energy and it just ripples through the room. You're, you have work tables and tools and they just clatter onto the floor. The, uh, the hole in the wall, (laughs) like, shakes you see a couple more loose pieces of wood just kind of like shunt onto the ground (laughs) 
there's some cracks in the floorboard now. <laughs> You're like, does anyone have mending? Um, I do. I have mending. Oh, no, I don't. <laughs> it's fine. So um, we all have mending. We can fix a lot of this. Yeah. <laughs> the, other, the other note is that this spell is audible up to 300 feet away, and I don't know how far Grandma is. Um, I think she's more than, I think she's more than 300 feet away. Cause okay. It was like okay. a 20 minute walk. So I just, I just want to check. I didn't think about that part. Mm -hmm. All right. Is that your turn? Yep. Okay. Next up is the spectator. Um, and it's going to, it's going to go for Benji. What? It, yeah. Oh. Because um, <clears throat> you're uh, closest to it now since it. Oh, wow. I rolled up at five, so I don't think a nine hits you. No. Okay. Yep. That's how it goes. Okay. That's its turn. Then it's Benji's turn. All um, right. I'm going to draw out my, draw my, my short sword. And I'm going to raise it in front of me and then say, we've been over this before. You have three seconds to disappear or I'm going to smite you again. And I raise my sword up and I start walking forward to them. Okay, make, and, make an intimidation check. All right. I mean, I am almost four feet tall. <laughs> it's pretty intimidating. Uh, a three. Oh no! <laughs> wow. It, you 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 hold your sword aloft. You feel pretty valiant. The ghost. Uh, One. <laughs> <laughs> it. Two. It <laughs> what? You, every time as you count, it like scoots a little closer. <laughs> 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 And instead of saying three, smite. <laughs> okay, roll the attack. A twenty, dirty. That works. That would definitely hit it. All right. <laughs> I thought it was about. I thought they should say that twenty. I was like, damn. Yeah, wreck that smite. smite. Four With smite plus the. Oh, where is it? 1d8. Okay, so... Alright, he's definitely being smited in a bad way for him. Mm -hmm. So, it was 6 plus... 25... Thirty-one. Yeah. Uh, Damn. How do you um? How, how do you want to do this? How do you want to kill the ghost? Smite the, the specter. In a way, I feel like I don't want to kill it. I'd like to use the flat of the blade, maybe, and just try and beat it into submission beat, beat and it. back into the <laughs> into the ground instead of. <laughs> yeah. So you you bring your your sword down on it and just kind of like like a like a mallet just kind of. <laughs> yes. Boop, boop. Yeah, like a whack-a-mole style yeah, smiting. Just kind of go back. You just kind of squish it back down, and it retreats back into the floorboards. All right, <laughs> put that away. You got a lot of cleaning up to do. There's another one of those specters around here, aren't there? Yeah, it's behind you. Okay, now we got Grandpa. There's a specter right by you. <clears throat> by me? Yes. I yeah. will get on my knees and start casting mending on the cracked floorboards and say, no, really, we're here to repair everything. <laughs> and it's a one minute casting time, so I'm going to be doing this until I get attacked by the specter for ignoring <laughs> so. Okay, make a persuasion check at disadvantage. At disadvantage, awesome. Yeah, because you even... Okay. <laughs> Attacking right, its so friend, blowing up the house. My lowest uh, roll was a 10, so persuasion 14. On that. E. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I, 
Better than what I would have probably gotten. <laughs> it um ma- with that you managed to oh he's walking away. <laughs> with it uh it it watches you start to <clears throat> like it watches you start to like mend just like a little bit of it, and the ghost comes and looks at it, and you are so convincing in your um persuasion that it goes and disappears into the floor so you managed to persuade it to leave and now I then, I then go and turn to the to uh, my son and I'm like I can turn it off and on like a faucet <laughs> yeah we know dad you're good with faucets <laughs> <laughs> the, so now you guys are in a workshop with broken floorboards, um, a bigger hole in the wall. Y'all need to be mending this stuff like like ASAP. Bonnie's going to be here any minute, and we cannot let her see this stuff. All right. <laughs> it's time um, for... to go around and press the digitate and pretend I'm helping to mend. It's time for the... I'm for the Bonnie special. Mage hand lasts a minute and takes one round to cast. So I cast until I have nine mage hands, and I have them all, like, start sorting everything all at once. <laughs> okay. So um, roll your uh, spell modifiers to see how effectively you can repair the shop with your magical means. And Benji, what are you doing? Are you trying to use tools? I need rural help. I don't That's you, know. Scott. You're Benji. Oh, I didn't hear you. Benji, Scott. Are you, <laughs> what are you doing to try to help fix things? I don't really have those spells. So <laughs> I have I have supervisory capacity. Oh, I so guess you're I, assisting. Okay. okay. I'll I'll um, like I'll start hammering boards into the across the hole or something to make it patch it or something. Well, that's okay. fine. Then we can mend it and make it look better. Okay. So wait, okay. is, is yeah, I'll, the I'll... only one that's actually fixing something? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the only one who cannot fix right? anything. Are you... No, I'm using prestidigitation to make the floor look better. Yeah, you're cleaning okay. up the mess, right? No, you're no, no, up... no. I'm just making it look like it's fixed. I mean, there is black powder like on the floor and dust everywhere, so that that's true. Help. Yeah, so... Give me Excuse your me. You numbers. Me you want me to roll a d20 and add my modifier just as a yes. general? Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah, okay. it's like a, kind of like a general <laughs> check. And then, Scott, you can... Um, are you trying to tell others what to do, or are you just trying to use your tools? Um, I'm telling others what to do, and I also think I'm going to cast... Um, uh, cure Wounds on myself, because I've taken a beating from these kids today. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. not you these could. kids. This kid. <laughs> this kid. <laughs> you know, you include them Look, all I'm together not, for the good and the bad. I'm, blamed for, I'm, not, I'm getting blamed for shit I'm not even here for. <laughs> but you get praised for things you're not here for, too. Yeah, Morgan taught me that spell. <laughs> He's starting to be really useful. Um, so 18. <clears throat> I get okay. Five okay. And Scott, roll your, your yeah. modifier as well, your spell modifier. Um, oh, on that one, so four. Okay. Jeez. And Grandpa Cog. <laughs> Six. 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 Oh, all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you guys are We're busy at work, right. and um, it looks very clean, but also you only managed to mend about like a third of it before you hear a knock on the door. Um, so, bar ghosts, you see the, the house approaching, what, do you want to do any, like, last pitch efforts to, to try to stall Grandma Bonnie? Uh, if, if you want, Grandma, I can go fetch them for you so you can talk to Grandpa and, and Dad, and that way, you know, you can discuss things before doing any inspections if you need to, without uh, the maybe. kids hearing 
Grandpa can settle up the bill. Yeah, yeah. make a persuasion check. Gosh, what are you doing to me? Holy hell, I rolled a 19. Talking so, to her. <laughs> so, actually, that's right. With pers- pers- I have a plus two persuasion. It's a 21. I rolled a 19. Okay, okay. I mean, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I must be getting your guys' good luck tonight, Scott. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> you roll like ones and fours. <laughs> yep, I'm getting lots of bad. I, she... All I know is Bargos is feeling pretty proud of himself with Grandma right now. Yeah. You're working her. For now. (laughs) Yeah, for now. (laughs) So she dismounts her pony and says, well, I need to stable the pony anyway, so you can bring them around to the stable. And Uh, Bargos will run in the house and be like, what happened? Grandma's outside. And I just look around, I'm like, oh, God. (laughs) And and I'm going to start casting mending as well to try to help mend some of this. (laughs) The ghosts came back. And, you know, I've never seen these ghosts that you guys keep talking about. It's never when I'm here. They were definitely here. Look what they did. Bonnie's right outside. Yeah, she's outside. I told her that I get you. All right. And and, you got you got to keep her outside for a few minutes. Oh, you're mending. You guys go outside. At least one minute. I need at least one minute. Hold on. And I'll slip. I'll slip out through the door. Oh, Bonnie. And I'm going to. And I'll close the door behind me. Oh. I, I got to warn you, there was, uh, you know, beans last night, and y- you may want to wait a moment. It, whew, whew, oh, you may want to back up a moment. Oh, my God. Right. That's the plan. Hold on. I press the digitate and soil your clothes so you smell <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. You're <laughs> inside working. You don't even know. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, you you run over to the outside. You go through the new door and you go outside to Bonnie, and um, she's at the stables. You know we and, love um, Hop and John, and it and it they all went. Whew, everybody's been having the, you know. Well, and you see, you're just kind of like wave in front of her nose, like oh, that is foul. <laughs> oh. We're trying um, to air it out right now. It should be done. It should be aired out in a minute. The workshop. How is the walk? So we can leave the workshop and go to another room without going outside. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. The I'll workshop be, is attached to the house. I will um, proceed to uh, my bedroom and cast Tiny Hut and go inside and hide for the next eight hours. <laughs> 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 All right. And, after mending, if I have time, I want okay. to do a druid craft on the wall where the hole is, where they put the wood up, and make like a mural of grandma with flowers and stuff. <laughs> like making flowers. Go. And I'm going to say it was grandpa's idea. Like to, an effigy. To pay homage to her. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, make a, um, <clears throat> again, like, I guess a, your wisdom check to push the spell to how you want it, it to Is be. it like the spell, like the spell modifier? Yeah, use your spell modifier. Okay. Let's see how. Uh, it cocked, and it was cocked right by a 20, so I gotta reroll. Uh, all right, roll again. Roll again. Okay, so 15, 16, 18. Okay, okay. It, uh, it it looks pretty good, actually. You're you're all impressed with yourself. You're like, oh, kind of. If you had like a little shirt, you would kind of just. Yeah. Uh, uh, so outside. Benji, you're with Bonnie, who is your mom, by the way. So she's just Bonnie now. Yeah, like yeah, <laughs> she's been demoted to Bonnie, and um, oh, that's sad. Yeah. Well, um, a little bit of background. She is a a career woman who wanted to um, basically fight the the good fight, and um, so she works in the big city. And um, basically, her work took her away from the family, and it drove a wedge between her and your father. And that's why they just decided after a while to split, and you went with your dad, and she went to work. So she, she's she been a complicated addition in your life for as long as you've known. And it's evident when you guys kind of stand there, and she says, oh, um... And you see her cough. Uh, make a <clears throat> make a perception check. Uh, 
a oh I, I'm on a streak a six a six <laughs> she um takes out like a little handkerchief and powder <clears throat> and puts it away and you haven't really I mean I mean it's just a cough so you don't think too much about it and uh so she <clears throat> she's got behind us <laughs> There's this uh, kind of awkward moment because she doesn't know what to say either. It's just, how, uh, how are you, son? How are the, the boys? I was walking with Bargos. Oh, how was that? Was that enjoyable? He's a smart kid, you know. Yes, he talked about the birds a lot. Well, also, uh, uh, Benji, are you like clean? Because you were definitely on fire and involved in a couple explosions. Oh, no, I'm not clean. <laughs> yeah. So, she eyes your clothing. Do you, um... Were you working on something? It was the beans. <laughs> they... <laughs> Make a persuasion check. <laughs> I think it should always be at disadvantage if you're trying to persuade your mom of a lie. <laughs> <laughs> His moms know. That's true. <laughs> An 18, but I should roll it as a disadvantage. Okay. You're right. You're I'm going to do that again. Okay. So 18 or a 20. Not Nat, but <laughs> wow. Okay. All you right. Got, you got gotten good, Dad. You got gotten yeah. good. So um, she. And in my yeah. head, I'm counting down a minute to, like, I, I want to have a feeling of knowing when I could actually go in, like in my head. Okay. She kind of just stares at you blankly. Oh, well, um, you should stay away from those beans if they're causing <laughs> so many problems. Yeah, that's for sure. How's, how's the job? Oh, you know, we, um, it's never ending. It's a little bit of an odd thing for her to respond that way because she usually has a long-winded story to talk about, like oh. what case she's on, what she's doing, and um, she. I'll press on that. Okay. Well, what's really going on with the job? Uh. She, she looks at you and you're her son and she just sort of, I've been thinking about retiring. Um, Where? I, you better not be here. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Tray bar, that's not nice. <laughs> oh, I, I assume I'm still fake helping. But if I'm oh. not. Oh, okay. If I'm not. Pressed digitation allows me to heat up food, and I'm bringing Grandma some of them beans. <laughs> it's sharing time. <laughs> well, I was thinking here, but if you don't want me here, I can understand that. I haven't exactly been prominent in your life. Um. Oh. Have you talked to, to Grandpa about that? No. Have you smelled Grandpa lately? I don't know if that's what you want in life. Oh. I mean, that's oh, a, that's an interesting thought. What, I mean, you're you're barely 250 years old. Why would you be wanting to retire so young? Um, make a, make a persuasion check. She she makes that you know her well enough to know like the face she makes when she doesn't want to talk about 13. it. Thirteen. Thirteen. <sighs> it's okay. It's wait. okay. You, you you want to talk to Grandpa about it? Oh wait, can I make an insight check? Yeah. Can you watch like kind of? <clears throat> you can. Hear All me. right. Yeah. So as a little kid, watching this obviously awkward interaction. I'm like, why don't you want to talk about it? What are you hiding? Dad said we're not supposed to hide stuff. You're not supposed to keep secrets. <laughs> uh, <laughs> as a woman who 
has not spent a lot of time around children. She pulls out the, her handkerchief and on it, you can see that there's blood on it. And she says, I'm sick. Oh. And I, uh, I don't know how much longer I have. Trey, can you can you go in and see if the uh, house is able to be traversed without so much odor yet? Yeah, I can do that. I and mean, he makes a big deal of opening the door and press digitating the stink out. <laughs> so there's just a when he opens the door, there's just a big waft of fart. Right, it blows right across us. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, just that comical like, green cloud. Have you seen a cleric about this? Well, I have seen several, but um, I can't seem to pinpoint what exactly is wrong. Do you think it's a curse? Maybe the, the Dolomites, they have some wily ways. I am... I wouldn't know. I'm not very versed in magics. Mm -hmm. um, if I can for a moment, just as a brief content warning for folks, only because I know some of my viewers have an issue with um, sick family. Um, okay. Well, just as a, as a brief, that's what's being discussed. And if you're uncomfortable, please step away. Well, of course, we'll we'll try and figure something out. If Grandpa will, what's that noise? Um, I don't know what that noise is. It's not my fan. Let's each one of us mute ourselves and see. Somebody just muted and that was it. I think it was gum. It might be my fan. Oh. Yep, that's what it was. Sorry. No, you're good. Um, yes. Yeah, of course, we can, we can find a way to make accommodations for you. I mean, it may be tense for a little while, but, you know, you're always welcome here. Thank you. I don't think it's contagious. I'd rather not dwell on the subject. She goes back to her usual put together self and she pulls out an, like a notepad and says, well, come to inspect. We're, you really want to do that this time? It needs to be done. You want me to do it for you? And I reach out to see if she wants me to take the, if she will, wants me to do it for her so she can I mean, if you want, you can you can sit in the gazebo and maybe take a take your feet off, and I'll run through and check off the stuff for you. Um, sure. Sure. And then she goes to like walk around the back where the hole would be. <laughs> <laughs> do you do anything to stop her? Um. Did, did I know that the effigy of her was already there? Did I see? I don't think I knew it. No. no. I guess as we're walking, I'll be like, yeah, we've been thinking about doing some renovations, maybe adding a window, and then we hit the corner and like, or, may, um. She just like side eyes you, Benji. I, I look I look away from her and at the <laughs> list. <laughs> what have you done, Benji? We really appreciate your concerns and care for the family here, so we wanted to do something special for you that that said that. Okay. Um <laughs> so she's seeing the back of the effigy. And so she's just, I, is this what it is? I don't understand what this is. Oh, you're, you're seeing the back of it. You, 
Come, come on through. I'll show you. Shit. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I helped Grandpa mend, and then I helped cover up the hole. We might be good. We might be good. Okay, so she, you bring her inside. Um, what did you get on the, you wrote like an 18 on the effigy, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, let's see how. It's like oh, all these beautiful okay. flowers that pop up. She, I rolled a natural one for her perception. So she literally only sees the effigy. <laughs> And then she, she, you see her walk in, and she just puts her, her hand over her heart, and she says, "Oh, that's so lovely. I had no idea that." Thank you. Hi. Is Bargos there? Bargos standing by, like proud of his work. <laughs> While she's looking at the effigy, I slap him <laughs> in the shoulder or something like, yeah, like upside that kind of thing, and then and then I give him this. And then it <laughs> while she's not able to see. I was saying I can only imagine that Bargos is like holding Trey Bar in that brotherly I'm covering your mouth so you don't say <laughs> And it, she, it was grandpa's idea. He, he thought it'd be nice to to do oh, <laughs> deception. Oh god. <laughs> <laughs> no, six. <laughs> And she just pats you, Bargos, and she says, It's all right, Bargos. I know it was you. <laughs> Still appreciated. And, um, and I helped. And, and then she looks I, over at Trey Bar. I look around the room and I start checking things off. Okay. And are these the famous beans? <laughs> yes. They're warm just for you. Goody. <laughs> she, like, I, I lean into grandma and like, we we need you. <laughs> well, shall we go to the kitchen at least? You're not supposed to leave without eating. Dad says I get in trouble all the time. And that's because we're kids. She's an adult. She doesn't have to follow the same rules we have to that's follow. That's not no, that's not how rules work. I cover his mouth again. <laughs> She she can eat in the kitchen where they have where we have spoons. <laughs> spoons would be appreciated, yes. And so she goes over to the kitchen, and um, <laughs> so you you I assume you follow her, and, yeah. And so she says, "Where is where is your grandfather? Why is he not here?" Uh, Bargos, you want to go find find Grandpappy? Um, uh, I guess maybe check the outhouse. <laughs> Who knows? He's check his room. his room. He's probably in his room. And I'll go knock on his door because this is something he's done before. Mm -hmm. He goes and hides in his bubble. <laughs> totally. <laughs> it's definitely what he's done before. <laughs> yep, once a month right. for sure. You yeah, can just you go, see him in there in the rocking chair. You knock on his door. What do Grandpa, you say? Grandpa, everything's good. <laughs> I'm out. contagious. No, no, everything's good. I, no, I, I took care, I, of, it. I, I I took care of it. I took care of it. Spectre, I have to, I have to quarantine for, for no, no, many Grandpa, hours. Grandpa, everything's good. I know, it's great in here. No, no, Grandma, Grandma Bonnie was happy with the room. It's fine. That's wonderful. Come out. She wants to talk to you. I'm pretty happy in this room. I think she, I think it's important. I don't know, but she wants to talk to you. Ew. Dad, that's Dad actually asked me to come find you this time. He never asked me to come find you usually. Really? Yes. You contested oh. charismas. <clears throat> oh, that's not fair. <laughs> contested charisma? Yeah. Seven. Crawling hot tonight. No, seven. It's off now. It's gone. What'd you get? About a two. I <laughs> sort of modified three. Six. So, so five. So five, 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 five. Bubble. So seven. that's seven. One. Yes. <laughs> How? I don't know, but it worked. <laughs> well, all right. No. Take some coaxing. Grandpa Cog, you managed to get the courage to go and crawl out of your, your hut. 
I, I make sure to bring him by the room so you can see the you know the the the, the pretty art that I did. <laughs> Grandpa, what do you think? She loved it. <laughs> he goes back and up in the room. <laughs> I, I am going to cast heroism on myself before I go talk to Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, a good brave choice you know she's not scary <laughs> no she's fine <laughs> i'm not where scared. is she You're scared so she to the kitchen so you rally your courage and go to the kitchen that's a change you <laughs> so when you see bonnie what are your, your feelings you turn the corner you see her in the kitchen she hasn't noticed you yet well, uh, she doesn't look a decade over 210. I can't believe how great she looks. So, yeah, she looks just as beautiful and put together and just, she's like the epitome of professionalism. <laughs> just, she looks great. Yep, yep. Looks great. And um, you and make you... eye contact. She... Hello. Good to see you. What a surprise. Must be the, the beginning of the month already. What do you... I don't actually know his first name. <laughs> he just kind of... uh, it's it's Grandpappy. Grandpappy's his first name. <laughs> it's been lost. He he forgot it over the last 300 years. <laughs> so everyone just calls him Grandpappy? But... Everyone just calls him Grandpappy. Does that actually... mean that Grandma's the only one that knows his real name? He also goes by probably old, old Cogs. What about Cogs. Pappy Cogs? <laughs> Paps. Paps. Hello, Paps. Hello, Bonnie. It's good to see you. Roll deception. Roll deception. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to nail it. Actually, the one thing this guy can do is deceive. I rolled a 13 <laughs> I'm plus 7 on deception. It's okay, a... yeah. I, she she believes you, and she says, well, it's good you're here. I think we should all discuss something <clears throat> open. I, and she relays that she's been sick, and that she is thinking about retiring and living with you guys here. And she says, I... I, if you're uncomfortable with me being around, then I can, I can just go get a flat in the city, and well, I can just stay in my current flat. And... No, 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 it's fine. I mean, you're dying, so what's the problem? <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Do you? She well, just said she she's sick. Beans. Well, she's. Bonnie, it's got to be fatal for you to want to live here with us. <laughs> well, I... Uh, there's kind of this bitter... There's a bitter smile to her because she forgets how well you actually know her. And uh, she says, uh, yeah, I'd like to be here. And in fact, I... I mean, I came in time for the Derby. Are you, it's, um, and then she, she names this date and it's actually like a week earlier than you thought it was going to be. Hey, wait, that's not what it normally is. Did they move the date? Oh, yes. Um, something about the weather being nicer. I think the Dolomites convinced of course the Burgermeister to do it. Dolomites. Trying to limit our time in building our, our Derby. And they well, probably started early. They're just jealous we got the <clears throat> nitroglycerin. Well, I'll... <laughs> here. Everybody just gets quiet for a second. <laughs> <laughs> Surprise, hopefully, Grandma. Grandma didn't, hopefully Grandma didn't catch that. He, you mean the nitrogen. He, he meant the nitrogen. What? No! You said it was my <laughs> <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. Bonnie, um, Bonnie, you can, I, I absolutely, you can stay here. What, I mean, you have what, 
40, 50 years left, that's fine. We'll be, we'll be, we can definitely share. I, I will, um, I, I, I can sleep out in my hut. You can have my room. Oh, I um, don't think that's entirely necessary. There are, I'm sure we have room in the house or if you want to. We can always to... build a room. I mean, we, we could. Mm. I, um, I can, I can live in town if it's. Uh... We make... No, you should be here with the boys. They would love to have more time with you anyway. I'm going to look at Vargos and be like, team up. We can make grandma room. Sure. Vargos clearly uncomfortable with his skills at crafting. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all right. I'll um, just, um, I'm sure we can find a cot for me or something until the room is built. You know, the uh, spirits are still in the house, so, you know, not at the moment, but, you know, they still come and go. <clears throat> they were just here. I'm not surprised. They um, always showed up when we summered here. So this it's was okay. her, like, family summer home. And so she's she's used to this house and its quirks. I'm not surprised they're still around. They're very attached to this property. And Trey Bar will be like, it's okay, Grandma. I'll protect you. And he pulls out the Eldritch Cannon. He's like, we're so ready for this. And her eyes just get really wide as she sees this giant cannon. Oh! That, that's not a cannon. It's the engine to our derby that we're, we're thinking about using. For the pedal cart race. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, it was Grandpa's idea. He thought it might be time for an upgrade <laughs> to really show the Dolomites who's... Who's you know the best? Oh, I mean, lights. you know, if Wait, you keep your feet on no. the pedals, regardless of how fast it goes, it's still a pedal cart, right? You just have we're, the thought is strap the feet to the pedals, let the engine go, and the feet will just keep spinning fast, and we'll just go fast. I was actually thinking of researching a spell called Mage Foot that could start doing the pedal cart for us, oh. or just extra feet. <laughs> Double the is you're just power. like throwing all these <laughs> ideas at her. She's just that's it. That's how we're gonna win the race. And a little help from. <laughs> well, yeah. as you can sure tell, we haven't thought it all through yet. We just did. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> that is a bulletproof plan. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we get nowhere in life. <laughs> She's I... just like, Great oh, work. you're amazing. You... I can't believe you did that. It's because I listen to you, Grandpa, not oh! Dad. <laughs> I'm so proud. <laughs> I rush over. I rush over and give him a. <clears throat> you see, Bonnie exhale, and she looks at Vargos, and she just kind of mutters, "I think they do need me." I can tell. Well, do you have all the parts you need? And then she's like, "What do we have in the kitchen?" And she opens the like cupboards. <laughs> no, and no, like, don't touch that one. Like just, it's literally just like spider webs, and like it's just so empty. And she goes, "You let Herman out." We were and yeah. There's this like spider that's crawling on the counter, and she's like, "Oh, um, well, Herma has better places to be. Why don't we have food?" Actually, we were hoping it would lay eggs so we could have little tiny omelets in the morning. I usually go out and find food and bring it home for us to eat. And then saves she, money. <laughs> she says, "I." And so what she does is, all right. Well, some of you need to go to the market to get food. I have, and she holds up her coin purse. I have plenty of coin for groceries and whatever else you need for your derby. So, um, who's going to town? Immediately, Robert. Traybar takes the bag of coins. Vargos <laughs> will try to grab it from him <laughs> before he takes off with it and hand it to Dad <laughs> if he can. Dex, uh, Dex, are we doing Dex? Dex. Yeah. Dex rollies. All Dex right. rollies. 22. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, you beat me. I got a three. Yeah. <laughs> I rolled a one. Triumphantly, Traybar pockets the 15. coin first. Yeah. Didn't beat a 22. <laughs> 
this has been a lot of excitement to me. I think I'll, 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 I won't go to town and I'll stay here and start cleaning out my room and, and doing more repairs on the damage done in the workshop. <clears throat> By the way, Grandpa, you never answered me when I pointed out the, the wonderful piece of art we made for <laughs> you. just walked past it. Oh, did I? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like it? I love it. Deception check. Insight check. <laughs> I got it. Thirteen total. Fourteen. Yes. <laughs> Thanks, Grandpa. You're so welcome. So to walk away. do you know that he just lied to you? I know. Yeah. I just said thanks. Uh, and then I went down and I just tried to walk away. I, I now re I basically I've been studying draconic to come in and so I tell him I love you anyway in draconic. <laughs> do you know draconic? I do. I took it. Oh, so okay. I could talk to him. And um, it's uh, is it? Do you know it really well, or are you just like learning it? No, I I, I have I took it as one of my languages. Oh, okay, okay. So he says I love you in draconic. Um, the accent is okay. <laughs> <laughs> in the background bonnie just she goes to she knows exactly where you stash your alcohol and booze so she goes over there and says it's gonna be i'm gonna need some of this <laughs> <laughs> we have right. food but there's plenty of that so i guess while grandpa and grandma discuss the future uh, you know dad and Trayvar, I guess we can go to town. Stopping trip? Hey, town trip. All right, so. You guys. Blah, blah, blah. Uh oh. We lost Grandpa, I think. Grandpa, no. Uh oh. Grandpa, no. There he is. There he is. He cast invisibility for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> so Bonnie, what else do you know about the the Dolomites and their do you know anything about their derby? I did see them uh, parading around their cart earlier. So if you go into town, I'm sure you could see it. But, mm. um, they're very proud of their um, state of the art engineering. Heart. She just kind of waves her hand, like you know, like you know. She, you sound like you're pretty proud of that cart too, and that bothers me. Your sons are going to put a lot of effort into beating them this year. You need to be behind them, not that, not those dolomite carts. But father, the dolomites have the fanciest state of the art. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And Trayvor's just going to like proudly prance around. <laughs> You you remember the last time we won? Well, maybe. I mean, it was, I mean, before the boys were born, of course. Yes, I remember Pappy won. Yeah. We can do it, you know. We've done it before. 300 years ago-ish. 250 years ago-ish. I'm not saying you can't. 200. And she just, just like takes... Just... <laughs> See, she has confidence in you. I'm sure you'll do well as soon as you start. And, <laughs> and uh, well, I need to uh, talk to Pappy about All right. the house. I'm going to take, so I'll take the boys out to the shed. We got some work to do on this, on our derby. You know, Grandma, okay. we think that the Dolomites might have been the reason why our stuff got flooded. But nobody would look at the evidence. So don't trust those dolomites. And she, I don't, I don't think you would actually know this about her. Where she's like, well, um, what a, Miss Corthia, the mother of the, the the matron of the family, actually was a co-worker of mine. So she would know how to dance around the law. 
Yeah. Well, we're going to kick their butts in this race, and we're going to show everybody that we're that the cogs are not not to be trifled with, and not in a bad way. Just you know, we know what we're doing. Oh, and Fargo right. tries to act really confident, even though he is totally not as confident as his brother with building things. <laughs> <laughs> So what are we doing first? Are we going to town first or are we working on the cart first? We'll go to town first. We've got to get parts right, to yeah. the cart. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah all right, so. And we got to, yeah, we got to spy a little bit. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I can do that. Yeah. So you guys start walking to town uh, about at the afternoon. Farmers are plowing their field with their oxen or miniature bulls, depending on what race is driving the animal. You see roosters crowing and field hands that are hard at work in the spread of crops. And the center of town is where there's a market street and all the all the housekeepers and, and are out to get the best price on freshest food. Pickings are, are slim this year because the harvest, most of the harvest was lost. And a few people give you there's an occasional dirty look your way. And you know I don't even that, notice that. Yeah. I'm a total Bargos optimist. I, I don't even think that that's what it is. Mm -hmm. Bargos does. And he kind of like leans his head low. <laughs> he's still not used to this. You know, he, mm -hmm. he he's getting used to the not the used way. to the family shame. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, used to the family shame. he is new to the orphan. family. Yeah. <clears throat> I kind of like try to wave at people and they just like ignore us. I'm like, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um, you, I mean, you get a few like little kids that wave at you because you're dragonborn. They've like never seen that. They're like, oh, cool. But um, yeah, like older generations, like they, they like pull their children away into the shops, that kind of thing. <laughs> Don't look at them. <laughs> I of course and, let them go and play or do whatever they want. They can they can run rampant through the town as long as they don't blow anything up or flood anything so we can't go rampant through the town because so, that's what Trayvar will do so i guess on that note i just had a really dumb idea okay that if i line up bargos with like the peripheral of my cannon i can make it look like he's breathing fire for the kids <laughs> <laughs> okay um do you want to that would be like a combined check of something <laughs> Do a performance, performance checks, yeah. Performance checks collectively. I got a 12. Okay. <laughs> I got a 14. Okay. I mean, they're kids, so they um, are easily impressed. And and they don't you, burn much either. Yeah, they, they're too short to hit. So, <laughs> And I mean, they're, they're like dwarven children, so they're really short. So... <laughs> And they're just like, oh, yeah, fire. Wow. <laughs> Look at you. All right, that's enough, boys. That's enough, boys. We don't need to We're be. We're inspiring uh, the youths. I know. You You just impressed them greatly, and you don't I want them do to anything. catch on. I just opened my mouth. It wasn't me. I just. You don't want them to catch on. Get, do it again. Like any magician, <laughs> you want to keep your, your magic a secret. Like you, want, you don't want them to know. So now they're all just enthralled. But if they ever figure <laughs> it out. You can't do it too often. You have to hold it and build it up. Let's go spy on the cart. Okay. <laughs> okay, so you, uh, you're you talking about the Dolomite cart, right? Oh, yeah. All right, That's yeah, the so... only cart that matters to us. Even though we know there's a bunch of other carts, that's the... Even if we don't win, I, I'd be happy with just beating the Dolomites. Like, we could come in... Second to last, as long as they're last, and it's a vic and it's a victory in my mind. Okay, so there's a crowd around the Dolomite cart, and I mean the Dolomites are rich and attractive, and they have shiny things. So, like, of course, people are going to be around them. Um, you can see that their their cart has a sleek body, smooth finish. It's like a mm -hmm. it's a white racer with white and silver and a like a chrome finish it looks really good like um they open up like the hood of the cart i guess to like show the pedal system and everyone's like ooh ah um and you see silton and cliff who are the eldest of the the boys and silton's kind of this 
he's like the skinny guy that talks talks stuff up and cliff is the like tough guy that hangs out in the bag and so they're talking it up and we have the best engineers money could buy and cliff sees the two boys and i say that's not true because you didn't hire us <laughs> yeah and i'm gonna press the digitate like mini fireworks next to us <laughs> cliff it, it comes over and he says well, that's funny because i seem to remember your water park breaking best best engineers whatever cog knobs it looks like your water park broke. <laughs> wow, that's a pretty, pretty good nickname to have for us. Cognobs. Cognobs. Uh, Cognobs. I can't and even I will, hate uh... it, even though I'm supposed to. And I think Bargos actually like towers over him and kind of growls a little bit. Now, like, now, boys. To try to, to, to try to scare him back a little bit. No, no. I, I back of the collar i pull him away none of that none of that we're just here to have a good time let's go look at their cart it could it looks impressive from the distance and i'll walk up and i'll start peeking in oh did you use paint from ground emerald because this green is pretty spectacular and um you see uh silton comes over and he kind of like leans on the hood looking all cool he's like oh yeah we had to import it from across the ocean blah 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 it's so yeah of course we did and oh yeah i couldn't get it yourself it's like why have it's just like well yeah it's across the ocean margos <laughs> wouldn't have walked over he would have walked away around the building uh -huh. and i went a wild shape into a badger <laughs> okay okay um Kids you, love badgers. Yeah. So Simple you attacking. walk around um, and you turn into a badger. <laughs> and then I'm going to come over to the car, like try to be sneaky. Okay. Make a stealth check. <laughs> as there is a crowd of people. <laughs> badger stealth. I'm just trying to see their their pedal mechanisms and stuff and see if, they re if it really is engineer engineered well. I'm not a good enough engineer to know, but you know. In okay, my head, I make, think I could. Make an investigation check. All right. Let's see. Trevor, did you want to say something? Um, I'm, ha I'm having a really curious idea. 13. I don't know how much Trebar knows about mechanics. Okay. But did you bring I, magic blitzer in? No, no, I, me, know that if you put too much grease on a system, uh -huh. terrible things happen. Okay. So if somebody was to like cast grease, I would think engine. you would know that. I think you would know that. I mean, we've yeah, tinkered with stuff that. so long. Yeah. Okay. You, uh, so Benji, you inspect the pedal system and um, mm. it has multiple gears so they can oh. like adjust it. And um, the, it's fine craftsmanship. You look at like the, <clears throat> I guess they're called cogs, like the thing that pulls the chain around. Um, Fourteen it, for the stealth check, by the way. It's a, uh, it's just very. It is really nicely made. I I want to congratulate you boys. You really did outdo yourselves. That is some fine gearing in there. Who is the engineer for this one? Even though it, it wasn't you was um i wrote it down somewhere but it was basically like an engine like the top engineer in um the like university that's in the next city over uh, so they didn't do it themselves they, they actually cheated. did hire someone to do it. <laughs> yeah they actually did hire someone uh, it's supposed to be a family <clears throat> work uh, so how does it how does it work do you know the the, the mechanics behind this and um it's at this point that there's um, this kind of dramatic entry. So we'll uh, we'll hold that question. Um, Gum, you do know that the oh, um, too much grease would probably cause problems. And then um, someone there's so you're a badger, Vargos, <laughs> and someone shouts, "Hey, there's a badger! What's up with the badger, Vargos? <laughs> badger, Vargos." <Badger>. <laughs> And if you guys look, you guys will notice that my eyes are the same color as they normally are. 
brown like the badger no they're they're bright blue oh okay my, so like, even in my badger form my eyes are still this bright blue they look like my eyes okay oh okay, so they're like okay badger, badgers aren't huge and but they're they're, they're, they're kind of like they're the tiny they're actually tiny on here they're, they're, they're like they're tiny they're like a dachshund yeah yeah like a cat or dachshund and it's going to and badger form we're going to jump up on the car and go <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay scare okay. the crowd away. Um. All right. Make an intimidation check as a badger. <laughs> Quit. <laughs> it doesn't do much. No. <laughs> I got a four. I mean, they're farmers, so they're used to animals. Yeah. So it does kind of make sense. And then one, and then Silton's just like Cliff, get rid of this thing, and like I got Cliff him, comes... I got him, and I grab him by the tail. Quit badgering them. <laughs> and I walk him away. As he picks me up, I scratch the paint on the car. <sighs> All right. With and, both hands. Just and I totally don't stop that. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, they just, and <clears throat> Silton and Cliff are just like cursing up a storm, like, your stupid badger did this. And they're like, come on, let's get out of here. We're going to. Go and test this on the racetrack or whatever. Okay. While the badger is doing things. Yeah, I distracting have, everybody, right? I mm -hmm. have the ability to infuse item. Okay. Can I change one of their gears into a homunculus servant of mine? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have to see or touch it? or? I have to be able to see it. Uh, but I can forego attunement and just let it be its own tiny sentient construct in their engine. And how long is is it an action? How long is it? Uh, it's an action to do it, and the infusion remains indefinitely uh, up to three days after I die. <laughs> uh, okay. Um... <clears throat> Or until you dismiss it, I assume. Um, yeah, I'd probably say. Yeah, so if I try to attune, so I, I can make two, and if I try to make a third, the first one goes away. Yeah. Yeah, I don't see why you couldn't do that. So I'm going to make a sentient cog. Go ahead. Okay. And does it just happen? Is there... Oh, yeah, that's oh. it. So okay. one of one of the gears... Um, it can be up to small in size. Uh -huh. um, so is just now, it's its own gear. It can do what it wants to do. <laughs> or what okay. you tell it to do in the middle of a race. Uh -huh. So um, they're pushing the cart away uh, to go to the track and to like test it. Um, Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do you guys go to watch the test? You should tell it to chill out until until till the race. Play like tell it like play it cool until the race. Yeah, I want to set up a code word for like it does it acts normal until it is told this and then it just sits still. Okay, so you just tell it to chill out. Yeah, it's gonna it's gonna hang tight until it's told to to hang tight, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I'm so, yeah, glad we'll I didn't say, see we'll that. We'll say, be free and hang tight. And uh, it's free right now, so it will function as normal. Does it... Um, so, uh, geez, okay, sentient cog. Uh, yeah, so uh, it's up to you how much it listens to me, but... Uh-huh. It, um... So you told it, it to be free? What'd you tell I, it to be? I told it to be free right now. Be free. Okay. Um, <laughs> just so it just like, uh, yeah, you see it kind of <clears throat> like wiggle a little bit, but it like, it can't seem to get free of the chain this moment. Um, but you get the sense that, um, like, you know how your homunculus things work, and you know they can, like, 
kind of bend themselves. So you pretty sure like eventually it will wiggle out of that chain. Or when it changes gears. Yeah. Or when it changes We're gears, <laughs> it'll just pop out. So we're going to go back to Grandpappy and Bonnie. Um, and so you're discussing what to do with the house. And uh, she... <laughs> she says, well, are you, are you going to race this year? Well... <clears throat> I wasn't going to, but frankly, the kids really inspired me. I think there's something too where we could like uh, come up with something to beat those Dolomites. So I'm actually thinking of sketching up something to so that we could work on it when they come back. I gotta say, they're not as dumb as they look. They must have got that from you. There's a, a small little smile. Especially Bargos, right? <laughs> yeah, especially especially ah, Bargos. Ah, yeah. Took right no. after me. He, Bargos is a good kid. I hope he doesn't realize we picked him because he was bigger than the Dolomites. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll catch on sooner or later. Oh, he probably won't. He's pretty dense. He's a good kid, though. <laughs> you know, I was surprised at how convincing he was on the way up because I always thought of him as a rather awkward child. But well, he's very you know, talkative today. Your broken clock is right twice a day. Yes. No. Well, do you want to go to work on your cart? No, actually, I think I'll. Make sure that uh, you have a comfortable place to stay first. I'll wait for the I'll wait for the boys to come back. I feel like uh, they can do the work and I can supervise it. Well, then what the hell am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> You're going to supervise the supervision. So, and I, I'm real sorry that. Uh, you're going to go sooner than you should, but you know, you get to see. Uh, get to see old Garl before we do, so there's something there. She just kind of like cringes. <laughs> oh, yes, as usual, Pappy, you have uh, quite a way with, with words. Seven wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and she looks around for literally anything to talk about, and um, so you have a Where's the dog? And uh, you had a dog named Pepper. Yes, said. yes, Pepper. And then so, uh, we replaced it with Salt. Um, but the problem is, um, I think we washed them, and I don't know what happened to them since then. <laughs> she, she kind of just. <laughs> oh, I see. Well, maybe you're four cat people. <laughs> Perhaps. Well, anyway, I I'll go get that room ready for you because, frankly, I you know you. I know we had our differences, but I, I, I want to make you comfortable at least. So, and he awkwardly shuffles out and starts doing exactly that, uh, pitching his little chest and sacks and stuff, and like cleaning out the room and and going and then working in the workshop and just starting us some sketches for when the uh, when the rest of the family comes home. Yeah, okay. She Okay, we'll just yeah, she goes to the pony to get her things and we'll go back to Benji and Draybar and Barbagos. So you um watch as they, they roll the, the cart away and um it's a it's at this point you hear the other three Dolomite children. And Oria, who's the eldest daughter, says, you can't even see, Roxia. I don't know why you want to get out so much. And they're walking out of the general goods store, which is, like, weird, because you've never actually, like, seen them shopping. And then Oria looks over at your group, 
and she walks past you guys and she like cut she like flicks her hair and then like slaps you <laughs> slaps Vargos in the face no you're not tall enough slaps one of you in the face with her hair It'd and be Trey says, then. <laughs> 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 and like you'd be like you'd be more annoyed but she's really hot so you're like part of me takes this but it's still pretty <laughs> like still pretty rude dad says <laughs> it's because you like me <laughs> and she's like <laughs> how old are you supposed to be again <laughs> i have no idea okay, okay i'm gonna assume the equivalent was like 10 years old and okay. human and I'm, that's still a thing in school right yeah okay then she, she's not gonna be okay i thought you were older <laughs> when i did this all right she'll flick her hair okay. she won't slap me in the face but she'll flick her hair and say it's not like there's much to see. And, uh, uh, Aurea, who is going to be probably like 12 ish, a little bit older, she says, No, I heard, I smelled the cogs. And, and for some reason, Roxy actually likes you guys. You're not sure why, but she can't see what a fucking mess we are. Yeah. <laughs> She's just like, I like talking to them, they're fun. And so she, she, and she recognizes you guys because you always smell like machine oil. So <laughs> she's just like, no, they're here. I know they're here. And I'm... she calls out. Go on, go on. She calls out, Trey Bar, Bargos. Are either of you here? And We're as we, we start walking past and I obliviously keep walking and I turn a corner and do some other stuff, and they're left behind with the Dolomite <laughs> kids. In a, inadvertently, I'm just not even paying attention as I'm looking at the other carts and stuff. Yeah, I, yeah, look, at, there's, there's... I look at Trey Bar. Are, are we supposed to play hide and seek? Well, well, she's, she's the nice one. I think we can talk to her. Yeah, yeah we're here. Oh, and she she's pretty uh well adjusted to being blind like she she hears you and then goes right over to you so like blind people can get a lot of, get around better than you think oh yes yeah. oh yeah yeah she goes over to you and she has her stick and she says oh it Vargos. how are you and trey bar i think i heard you i think your dad was around too what? Uh, and it looks around. <laughs> yeah, he'll find us. Are you guys ready for the derby? Oh, we've been ready. We've been ready for weeks. What? Oh, that's yeah. Great. And I like nudge you. I nudge you like. Uh, did you build something without me? Traybar has the obliviousness of his dad. <laughs> I just kind of go yes grandpa and I built it we we're well, going to surprise you why did you let me play with the nitroglycerin then I was supposed to do the the nitrogen <sighs> the nitrogen um, no the, yeah, the and he likes go, mimes flicking it at things it, it's really good seeing you and I will druid craft a flower for her and I'll put it in her hand but we have to go Ooh. find our dad and then I will grab Trebar and pull him around the corner. And, and like as we leave, I'm like, dude, I just don't want them to know that we're not ready yet. God. But we're not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, but they don't need to know that. They should be scared of us. I mean, I guess. <laughs> just play along, man. So while you guys were talking to, um, to Roxia, Benji, you're you're just looking at the other cards. There's the um, the bad babes and the Reggie Rockets, and and the Reggie Rockets are just a bunch of teenage boys who kind of cobbled together um, this whatever they got from you know old farm tools. I compliment and... everybody on their excellent cards. Everybody gets compliments. Yeah, yeah. the the Reggie Rockets. Um, they actually like the majority of the boys like actually like like you 
because they just see the cogs as like interesting and eccentric and so he's like yeah thanks mr mr cogs cog i think it's just one cog we were, we were going to, we did this and this, we, we kind of like mm. didn't have any wheels. So we decided that we'd use, we'd put together and they describe how they assembled the axle and um, how they managed to just kind of jerry rig the, what, with what they had, which is kind of actually pretty impressive given yeah. the tools that they have. I'm very and, impressed uh, boys. I think you're going to win this year. I'm like, uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. We and can- I say it to everybody. Uh, the the bad babes are like a bunch of um really tough closet lesbians who hang out together and are build carts roller derby (laughs) yeah yes very much roller derby energy (laughs) nice love it yeah yeah they got tattoos one of them smoking a cigar and another one has a mohawk and you know they they'll talk to you about the cart but not does your um do your parents know you're smoking cigars? That you're you're a little young for that, aren't you? You're not even a hundred. <laughs> She's just like I'm ninety nine. <laughs> well, I mean, if you got ninety nine problems, smoking is one. <laughs> and you are a little sensitive to smoking because Bonnie is a smoker. Oh. That stuff's going to kill you. I mean, if the Dolomites don't with their cart. So let me look at your cart. And I ask for things like, you know, how's the mechanisms work? How's it ride? Like, just all the stuff that that mm-hmm. uh, cart nerds would, would ask about. Yeah, yeah. They, they'd talk cart with you and explain what they, they did. And they focused more on, like, um, making the... Uh, wheels like go faster on the pavement or something like that so <sighs> and, nice streamlining uh, huh thanks it was up to misty over here she's like yeah I blah 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 did this stuff and <laughs> tiffany doesn't know a lot about mechanics so just pretend it right <laughs> uh, as you're talking you hear grafton who is the uh Patriarch. The father, the yeah, the the patriarch of the Dolomites, and he's like, "Ah, oh, Cogs, my good boy, fancy seeing you out here, isn't he? He looks dapper in his suit, <coughs> and he has his wife, Miss Corthia, on his arm, and they've been walking. And I do love seeing the competition. <sighs> Me too. That's why I come out and check it out every year." I saw your boys earlier. They they took the cart out to give it a little test. Um, but you know, all these carts this year are pretty strong com- competitors. There's a lot going to be a lot of contention for that victory for the trophy this year. You can see it in these carts. Oh well, we had our plans done by Senior McGuffin at the university. The best of the best. And what uh, engineer are you using? We're using, hmm, I'm not sure I want to tell you who we're using because next year you'll try and steal them. And I nudge him. It's just, it's a, us, and, me and my sons and my grand, and grandpappy, of course. Uh, 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 and he does that like, you know, like stuffy laugh. And he's like, well, I suppose, uh. And we and we've been at Canon. It was like a three hundred year gap of them not winning, right? Uh, it's probably been two hundred. I think it's been two hundred. Okay, so one hundred and ninety seven. Okay, one hundred and ninety seventh time is the charm. It could be, but I mean, your card looks pretty pretty uh, hard to beat. So if it happens, it'll probably be a little bit of luck and a little bit of you know hard work. And, and Greece. His <laughs> wife, Miss Corthia, says, Oh, I I saw Bonnie today riding. Is she is she coming to the competition to watch? Oh, I'm I'm sure she'll want to cheer on the boys. And maybe oh. even your boys, who knows? Oh, how lovely. I would 
love to have an old co-worker of mine at the Shimmerfall Resort. We'll be sure to treat you. And, and of course, you could come. And oh, I, must, I must insist that we, we set you up with my cousin Dorothea, who is the... I know who that is. <laughs> so Dorothea is the town widow who yep. has a severe lazy eye, 20 cats, which she is allergic to, and the conversational skills of a rock. <laughs> you know, being a rock gnome, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you should introduce her to your dad. dad. <laughs> she just loves the last outing. And and I try and keep my face um <laughs> without making any obvious change when she mentions that. Uh, I mean, yeah, sure. I mean I can say I say hi to everybody. You know how I am. I I think the whole town is full of wonderful people. That's what I like about you, Benji. You're just so positive all the time. <laughs> and they, they chat for a little bit longer. They're like, oh, well, we must be going. And they say, we must gather the children. And they go and they leave. So. And something you noticed was that um, they're wearing the same clothing. Like, usually they have, like, new outfits all the time, but they're wearing outfits you've seen before. So, you're just like, hmm. okay. Oh, I'm so thinking they the spent money. all their money on the engineers. And this year, they don't have any money left. Maybe. Any extra. Good engineers, they cost a lot of money. It sure would be a shame if something happened to their engine. That would be a shame. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I mean, we're gonna we're gonna win fair and square, right, boys? It's like every year we're gonna give it the the old cog try. Yeah, I I did see earlier that the badger attacked your guys' car. I hope the I hope that nothing's wrong with the paint. Who is that addressed at? The 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 mother, because I we're walking up. Okay, Miss Corthia. And then she's just like, oh, I told those boys not to get your scratch on it. And she kind of like gets off in a huff. Um, and then she's just, Silton, Cliff, I'm on the worst with you. About, I lean over to Trayvon. I feel so good about that. Hey, hey. I, I wink at Bargos. I'll tell you later. <laughs> All right, we, yeah. should, we should get going. We got a lot of work to do. Yeah. yeah. So you go to the the general store pick up your things lots mm -hmm. of beans <laughs> no more beans <laughs> no beans yeah yeah the general <clears throat> the general goods store owner she her name's arabella she's a single mom working the shop um she's like oh hey hey cogs get you the usual i know you uh like your beans and she kind of like looks at this huge like sack of beans <laughs> that you usually buy <laughs> yeah I get the usual for you uh yeah i guess and we need a few other parts and i give her a list trey and bargos made this list for me of some things that we might need and it's stuff they might need for their build building the cart <laughs> Gree, you know grease and but but bargos bearings. Said that him and grandpa already built the cart Oh. I lean over to dad. We were talking to the Dolomite kids, and I just didn't want them to think we weren't ready. He hasn't figured it out yet. Uh, well, no, we haven't built a car yet. We're, we're working on it. Ball bearings, and we need some wood for the pedals, some really good, hmm, maybe some cork to put on the pedals would soften it. Do you have, oh, and and you... we just go over a list of stuff and see what they okay. have. Yeah. What do you right. have that can withstand explosions? Um, <laughs> she just says, um, <laughs> "He's joking. General... You know how he is." <laughs> She's just like, "I'm a general goods store. <laughs> I have these. I can get these parts or at least the materials for it." There, uh, and she goes in the back and starts gathering things and. Uh, <laughs> 
she's a bit of a town gossip. And so she's chatting up Benji. She says, can you believe it? Dolomites are doing their own shopping today. <laughs> she's just bagging, like, pulling, like, the cork out and, like, bundling your wood. What do you mean they're doing their own shopping today? I mean, they they didn't send in their, their worker? Well, they usually send at least their steward to come out, but no, they sent their kids today. As they sent uh, their youngest, and she kind of like snaps her fingers. Oh, what's his name? Um, youngest? Taryn. 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 Yeah, they sent Taryn in with their little blind kid, uh, Roxia. Sweet things. Adorable. And uh, their eldest She's daughter, nice. Oria. Yeah. Three of them came in. You know, I expected Oria to be the one in, in charge of the money, but Tara wouldn't have the coin purse at all. They actually had a little bit of a fight over it. I don't know what that's about. And she rings you up and... Well, I know they, they had to spend a fortune on the engineer for the cart, so maybe they're put going all in for the for the win this year and they just run out of money. Who knows? Who knows? But you didn't hear it from me. You didn't hear it from me either. While they are discussing, uh -huh. I would like to fill in Bargos. Like, you know how I can make the little, like, walking, you know, clay guys? Uh-huh. Yeah? I put one in their engine. Oh. All right, don't tell Dad. He he wants to yeah, learn no, no, spirit. No, no, no. It's still fair. We're using our abilities. Well, I mean, if you think about it, they're cheating anyways, because the whole competition is supposed to be you and your family building it. They hired people that aren't their family yeah see so. they already broke the rules we're just making yeah. it even yeah exactly we're making it fair <laughs> um so you uh you give the money um the, yeah. the coin that was given to you by bonnie covers it um you have the materials and food you need um you do do you buy food other than beans yes <laughs> okay you <laughs> I I'm mean, sure you get tired of beans. Yeah, we'll probably have some. Let's see, what are the what are the boys like? They like rice and okra, and what okay. else do what else do kids like? Oh, they probably like some turnip greens or and turnips, peppers, some beets. Beets, yeah, get some beets. Yeah, some you stuff. Get a bunch of vegetables. Yeah, mostly vegetables. We're not really big meat eaters. We eat a little bit here and there, but you know, feel too bad for the animals. So, and as you're, so you you bag up the stuff. You're walking out, and you see the. Uh, We're all carrying things, boys. Yeah, all, not yeah. just me. All you are yep. loaded up on things, both arms. You're walking back from the store. Um, there's a long trek back and uh, there's a crowd gathered by the old racetrack that's just on the outskirts of town. You pass it every day because that's on the way back to your house. Okay. And um, the townspeople are, are kind of like getting ready to cheer uh, the Dolomites as they are going to do a test run. And uh, Silton is just saying, who wants to watch this thing go? And the cheer goes, Wah, way down. And so... They um, begin to prep the racer, and you see Silton get in. He he has like he's known for his hair; it's just always perfect. And he puts on a helmet, which he, you've never seen him do before. He always just didn't wear one, but who knows? Maybe there's safety protocol, protocols now. And um, he takes off as the other two kind of push him, and. Need you all three of you to make an investigation check. Ooh. All right, so it's a natural twenty for a twenty-nine. And mine's a natural twenty for a twenty. Yes. <laughs> and mine was a one. So. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay, so. Trey so Bar, four you're... total. <laughs> all right. Trey Bar, you are, you're watching it, and you see him go. And um, you watch him go around the racetrack, and you see this point where he like starts to kind of slow down. It's on like the last kind of curve of the the oval of the track. Back, it's a couple of loops because it's a heat, so they have to do like four loops. And uh, 
you you're like ha there that's when my cog went loose and you can <laughs> see him slow down and like you expect him to just keep losing momentum but there's something really weird that happens where he actually gains momentum as he gets closer to the um uh like metal line of the racetrack and as he passes it it gets he gets faster and faster and then as he goes through it kind of like slows down and goes around again and then um eventually at like the second round again he kind of like pulls to a stop and um hmm. he waves his brothers down and the crowd's kind of like what's going on and um you can tell that something else is going on with that cart it's true that your your cog did in fact come to life but there's something else going on something Jeez. vicious Did, did you see that, boys? Yeah. Bargos? Huh? Yeah, what? Yeah. <laughs> Bargos, you gotta stop looking at the flowers, man. We're, we're watching the car. No, I, 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 was, I was watching. They were going round and round. Uh, and he... I uh, made so your left turn. <laughs> so you saw that? <laughs> yeah. All yeah. right. Well, and something weird was happening. I think they might be cheating. Oh, they're definitely cheating. I mean, outside the engineer. I mean, that's if that's cheating, it, it it's probably skirting a rule in a in a within the rules way that we just don't like. But something wasn't right about that. It seemed to accelerate when it should have been slowing down. There's. Something funny going on there. Um, We're going to have to make a really good cart this year to beat that. It's going to have to be perfect. Traybar will fess up to what he did. <laughs> and be like, yeah, listen, when they went to slow down, there was that little piece that was like hanging out and walking away. And I mean, you've seen my little like, you know, people. But he just kept going, and that he shouldn't be able to. The gears just shouldn't connect. You did what? You were trying to cheat? No. No, no. They cheated, and I was just trying to make it right. Two you wrongs said, don't make a right. But they do they... make everything even. Yes, yeah, see? <laughs> you, you win fair and square, <laughs> and, or you lose. You right? or that, you... That's how math works, right? It is not how it works when you're trying to do the right thing. Number. All right. I'm going to give you a choice, Trey Bar. You can either undo that magic and leave it the way it was, or you can go apologize and remove the gear and um, let them know what you had done, and they can, they'll know and be able to fix it. We don't, we don't win that way. I think it's already done. If you just undo it, it'll fall down on the ground. They can find the piece and I think it just came out. We don't yeah. we don't win by cheating. We win by our smarts. Well, technically we didn't cheat during the actual race. This is and just to see how well their engine very worked. smart. It took a lot of research to learn how to do that. Two hundred and ninety seven years is a charm is what I heard. So this might be the year we just do it based on us doing it. I mean that's still us doing it, but Trebar will go and go and apologize and explain what he did. No, don't do that. And I and I I, <laughs> hope I know, I know back. the option that dad wants. Um and uh Tiffany is not good at bullies, so they're just like, oh, so uh, the little chump thought you could pull one over us and still It's not hard. I know how the engine works, and you don't. <laughs> He's like, well, that's not going to stop us from winning, now, is it? Well, yeah, if you keep cheating and using magic like that. <clears throat> and he's just like, huh, yeah, and I come up. We don't need magic to beat you. Uh, your cart's going to do great, boys. I'm sure that, that your engineer is going to have it all fixed up right and ready. 
All right. All right. Let's go, Trey Bar. We, we're sorry for that, and we move, and we and I kind of arms over the shoulders, turn them, and head back. See, Bar goes. It's always better to be honest, and then beat their ass. No, I don't say ass. Beat their butt. <laughs> I like it better if you said ass. That, that's no. better. <laughs> so <laughs> now be like, what? <laughs> we need to get grandpappy. This cannot end the way that it, it's looking like. So this has to be 297 is a charm year. All right. So you right. return back home with uh, things in hand and uh, grandpa, you can hear them coming through the door. Oh, I, I, I run to the door and I'm like, I got it. I got it. I figured it out. Here's the design. It <laughs> looks like it'll roll. Yes. yes. I will ride in the front and steer, <clears throat> and Argus will be in the back as the main engine for this thing. We can't lose against those I've... damn Dolomites if we have Argus <laughs> as got... the person who's providing the power. I don't know if I'm that good at like that kind of stuff. Well, you can do it because where we, in actuality, in the very back of it, there'll be four invisible servants that'll also be manning gears and riding along with us. No, 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 no. We're not going to be doing no more. In front of dad. Oh, well, then don't tell them that these are going to be where the mage hands have individual (laughs) cranks. That can provide more power. All right, we're going to start. Close. We're going to start from scratch, Pappy. But I do want to address something, Vargos. You can do it because you're a cog. We I'm can all like do I, it. I just don't know if I'm athletic enough for that. Trey Bar, make sure there's enough oil in the lanterns. We're going to be up late tonight. What I if I this. went into my other form and used all four of my V? I mean, it's still me. And you become a squid? <laughs> I, become oh. a, I could turn into... Do squids have four and, four legs? I don't remember. I've been, can, can I've been learning I've been learning things about my capabilities, and I could turn into this. And this is probably the first time you guys have seen me do it. And I will turn into a medium-sized dragon. It's got like small wings, but they don't obviously fly yet. It's basically the same type of dragon I am, but I'm on all fours. Can you move That's... each foot independently? Yeah. Can you turn into a big centipede? No. Oh, shit. That would be terrifying. I can't do that. Um, let's get the, the graph paper. We need to design in a way that's going to win fair and square. Can we name the card the Dumpamite? The Dumpamite. I thought we would call it Dynamite. <laughs> because we're going to be cogs and machine. Cogs and the machine. <laughs> cogs and the machine. I like it. <laughs> okay, so all you guys go to work on the cart. Um, so we have a... Uh, Okay, so it's nowhere close to being finished. I thought you'd have at least another week. So someone needs to uh, cut the rough shape of the body out of whatever you're making it out of. So who wants to do that? Our tinkering, right? Our tinkering. Yeah. Yeah, you can be tinkering or whatever. You can use any sort of skill that you think might be appropriate. Um, If we we work in pairs, I have a question. Sure. I will cast... Whoever's going to cut the body, I'm going to use my bardic inspiration to help their ability check. Sounds good. Nice. Okay. okay. He says, who, who has carving <coughs> tools? I mean, well, we're using tinkering, aren't we? I believe yeah, in Yeah, I have wood carving tools. <laughs> okay. He believes in you. All right, Trey so. Bar, he believes in you. Trey Bard, do you want to cut out to the body? I have no choice. I have no choice. <laughs> All right, so it's an 11 plus dex and proficiency. Yeah, did so you get the seventeen total? And you got the okay. bardic, right? And bardic oh, and bardic, which is what one d six? A one d eight. One d eight. Seven. 
Um, right. So that makes it a 1724. Okay. I also have a vague idea of a in-world thing that could help. Okay. If we set it up so that the car is situated and the front bumper serves as the bow of a crossbow in three layers, while we are pedaling, there will be three little releases <coughs> we can hit to give us extra speed that propel the back wheels at a high speed. Um, okay. Um, just so I you know, know, this is how the, um, the, the, it works. So basically, there's one driver, they, they drive the course, and then someone has to be the, like, wheel or, like, car replacer. Uh, and then you have um, someone else be the second driver. Uh, and someone else do the, the second um, changing of the wheels. And there's a third driver. So one of you will have to hoof it for the third driver. Yeah, if that makes sense. I'll hoof okay. it. I'll let, I want them to have the most fun. So I'll take the, the terrible okay. cho chore. I, I, I could hoof it. I could hoof it because I can animal shape into something that's faster to get there faster. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, so um, here, I'll tell you, you would, you've done the race before, so you would know, like, what is expected, so... <laughs> Racer one, if you have land vehicle proficiency, you use that. If not, then you make an intelligence check to drive. And you also make a con, sec a con save because pedaling is tiring. Then um, the uh, wheel changer one makes a tinkerer's check or a dex to change the wheels and a strength check to, roll, to load the wheels. Um, and whoever is running will need to make athletics checks to get to the right place uh racer two just the same as racer one um where you make intelligence or land proficiency vehicle checks and a con save uh third racer also makes the con save because he's running and second wheel changer does tinkers check or dex check and a strength check to load the wheels and then the final third racer makes an intelligence check to drive and a final con save here, I can post that somewhere. So I can do int and com, but my strength is a negative modifier. My intelligence is a zero. <laughs> well, my I have good strength. I have I have a, a plus two to my strength. I have a fifteen, so I can do I, the strength stuff. The one thing I'm good at is lion and lemon. I have a. I have a plus three to my con. I think you would actually, I'll give you proficiency in driving land vehicles because it can in that you're a, um, a previously one. Yeah. Previously one. The other no. thing I saw is making designs. Check this out. We can make a big wheel and have Fargus become a huge hamster and he can then power <laughs> the entire thing. <laughs> and then I will, and then my then my son, who dared to criticize me, could just sit here and watch us win the race. Huh? No? Okay. <laughs> I believe in you, Grandpa. <laughs> you know, we could always see if Grandma wants to join the race. I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's a that's a good idea. It, we should not be excluding her just because she hasn't been here for so long. She's here Ooh, now. We need a fifth. We need we need a fifth. She, Pappy, and, you want to? Pappy, you want to go? Ask her. And we ruled out asking the specters if they want to join us. <laughs> Can they leave the house? What if we build the? What if we build the wagon from parts of the house? They can come with. That's fair. Maybe. So, <laughs> like, I don't know if they'll show up. Trevor, could you build a fifth companion? Yeah, I can build a homunculi um, up to small size. Yeah, it would be the same size as me. I'll go it's ask your small. grandmother. I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, so Bonnie is in the kitchen cooking act like food that's Actually. besides beans. <laughs> you, you know he brought beans, too. 
You know, I am just really uh, not in the mood for beans. Okay, you you know we need a fifth for the for the race. Would you be um, interested in helping us win this thing this year? <clears throat> and she's just out. I don't know if I'd be any help. I've never done anything like this. You'd be a help. Um, and she's just like, what? What do you need me to even do? I whatever the boys, want... whatever role the boys put you into. You Jesus. need five, and there's only four of us. Okay. Um, so she puts her utensils down and walks over to the, the workshop. So I, you need a fifth person to do something? Yeah. What do you want me to do? Are you feeling strong, Grandma? And then she's just... <laughs> she says, uh, well, I really haven't... I mean, she's really... She's, she's more dexterous than strong, I would say. She's quick. Quicker than you'd think. <sighs> do you feel comfortable driving? Oh, well, I've... I've driven a few things in the city so not too terribly uncommon driven people mad I heard that <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you we... want me to drive the cart for one leg it looks like because we need three drivers right alright I can drive short <clears throat> that's all I need you to do so, how did the trip into town go? Did you find out about the other cards? Found out they cheated. And then I found out that we did too, but we undid the cheating we were doing. But how... we didn't cheat. <laughs> but Bargos, just... you knew about it. I, just... What? I, it was the first I heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like raises her hand now. Now, have you found evidence that they're cheating? You could probably expose them and disqualify them. I mean, they paid some fancy pants over the seas guy to build their engine. And she's and, like, well, technically, that's a bending of rules. And, and well, Trevor had caused something to fall out, and. It should have stopped the car, but something else kept it going and made it faster. Yeah, they're doing something. That's true. We don't have evidence, though. And she goes, well, <clears throat> if you want to solve a case, you want evidence. You want information. Then sometimes you have to uh, go around some rules to get them. And then she just kind of like takes a sip of her coffee and I'll be in the kitchen and leaves. So she has implied that you go and um, basically break into their house and figure out what they're doing. Oh, grandma gets to break the rules. <laughs> That's not breaking the rules. It's, it's, breaking it's the just law. breaking the law. <laughs> <laughs> we don't understand it? anymore. But, but Dad, is it breaking the law if it's a wild animal that gets in the house? You know, those damn badgers. Or cats, or squirrels. Oh. You shouldn't have asked him. You should have just did it. I'm just saying, is that breaking the law? Because He's gonna tell you, you know what? It it's definitely breaking the rule or the law or something. Is it, though? I never heard of a law about squirrels not being allowed on houses. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go talk to your mother for a while. You guys work on this. You mean grandmother? <laughs> grandmother, your grandmother. And I head into the kitchen to leave them to their own devices. I think you should do it. I think you should too. And if you transform, I will fashion a small homunculus to ride on top of you that can help you. Wow. <laughs> Perhaps 
you bring some of the nitroglycerin, so if I need to make a quick escape. <laughs> and I will, like, pack a small pouch into the homunculus. <laughs> Not on me. I don't want that anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go with you. No, no, you outside. You stay outside. If you hear shit going crazy in there, you just throw it at a wall. Blow a hole in a wall. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so... Um, That's what happens when Dad leaves us for our own devices. That's the plan we come up with. Grandpa, what do you want to do? Do you want to join them on their <laughs> quest? Is, is, is my son staying home so his goody 2 shoeness isn't going to bother us? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, I'm in. Okay, so... <laughs> So, the the three of you, um, <laughs> just to, do you just march out of the house and go on your yeah. own investigation, or are you waiting till? Because it's still the middle of the day. Yeah, I, mean, I would say yeah. well, maybe we do it the next day. You know, or we can or, do it that night. But can you druid craft? Well, I need a short rest. A I bit? can short rest and get it back. So yeah, I can druid craft. What do you want me to druid craft? Oh, I'm thinking of like so we can sneak rest? out. Don't we have a don't we have a, a thing to build? We could work on the car for a little bit and then we can take a break and say we need to go check on a few things and then use it as a follow up on more supplies. I like yeah. that. It's a good plan. I'm, I'm impressed you thought of it. Thank, Thank you. you. Hey. And I walk back in. <laughs> you know what, boys? I need to, I need to, I want to go see that cart dry, ride again. I they might be t doing some more test drives. Why don't we head back into town? I want to keep an Ooh. eye on that. You guys. Go have fun. We're, we're going to help Grandpa, Grandpa too. Car. I actually think it's good for you know. I I was totally. I was so pleased and happy that I had spent all this time with your mother, just her and me. That I really feel that it was very beneficial to us, and I think you should do the same because you know she's not going to be here forever. And I really feel it would be better for you to stay here and spend some quality one-on-one -on -one time with her. Why take the boys and we go, you know, go. All right, make... that, that makes sense. You're you're right. I'll I'll spend some time with with mom. And and if you get bored of her, and uh, Trayvon will hand you a sketch of the plans he put together. Okay. All right. So the um, the three of you split off and go back to town. Uh, Benji, are you going to talk to mom or are you going to talk to mom and work on the cart a little bit? I'll work. Uh, actually, I'm going to go into town later the, after they leave. Okay. Not to keep an eye on them because I already know what they're doing. So. All yeah, right, I, so... I very sneakily take some nitroglycerin with me and a small <laughs> satchel of black powder. Okay. So the... Are the, are the three of you going to the Dolomite house? To their workshop? Yeah, I don't think so. Definitely to their workshop. All right, so. The Dolomite estate is a proud building with a stone exterior, a large fence around it, and a fountain with gardens on the ground. The fountain has been turned off, and the grass has probably seen better days, but other than that, the grounds are pretty spotless. From the gates, you can see large mastiffs patrolling the grounds, these big dogs just going around. Um, and they're, so there's gates, big field with dogs, and garden, and then the house. Okay. I have an idea. And I'm going to take out some of my rations and stuff them inside the homunculus serving. So he's gonna be like running beef jerky. <laughs> so let me know where you wanna go in and I'll have him go through the yard and distract the dogs away. Mm. All right. Is, is there a gate he's gotta get through? Um, you can go through the gate or <clears throat> climb the wall. Okay. All right, so I'm I'll sure there's in. probably there's probably a back gate too, but you know whatever you want. But the homunculi weighs how many pounds? Um, the food I'm stuffing into him probably weighs more than the homunculi does. Each oh, ration, like, like ten pounds, five pounds, twenty pounds. 
Uh, so each ration is two pounds. So he's probably like six pounds total. So why don't I catch? Why don't I cast Mage Hand and have the Mage Hand pick him up and carry him over the gate and like you know like put him out of reach of the uh, dog? Oh, perfect. Right. Okay. And then I think it'll last for about sixty feet away from me. At which point it'll disappear. And then the Humuclai can like run. Even if like at the very end it can um, catapult, flick the Humuclai. There you go. Sure, it can do it can do things like that. Okay. And I think I think he's going to turn Vargas is going to turn into a raccoon because yes. he has opposable thumbs and he can still do things that he needs to do. So Okay. All right, so what's happening first? We're going to distract the animals so I can try to get by if they're okay. chasing that food then, then right, I can get so through. Stuff the homunculus with rations. Um, you know, jerky and hard tech, and <laughs> then uh, Grandpa Cog, you may chant this over the fence, okay? No, so it only lasts 30 feet, not 60, so there's one flaw in the plan already, but that's well. fine, <laughs> okay? Okay, um, I'll see if I'll see how far they are away, okay? They are 20, they're um, I don't know, I need to roll something that. Could actually hit a thirty. So give me a second. Oh, I just read something that ruins everything. Let me grab a drink quick. The hand canish is if you ever cast the spell again. Huh? You can only have one mage hand at a time. <laughs> I'm so disappointed in magic. <laughs> <laughs> So they're yeah they're within range. Um, I'm gonna have you make a. Um, I, I guess there'd be some form of like performance or persuasion check to get their attention or convince them that they should chase this because they're they're like trained guard animals. So like, I need to get some kind of check. Me. Um. No, I need one from Grandpa Cog because he's the one okay. controlling the mage hand that's going to be kind of enticing the animals with. Poop them. <laughs> Animal hey, hand. Does the meat give him advantage since, you know, Trevor is assisting by filling the thing up with meat? Yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So do an animal handling check with advantage. We'll do that. Okay. And I have, a, I have, I have um, something, I have a backup in case it fails. Okay. okay. All right. Animal handling check with advantage. I don't see animal handling. I don't have it. Okay, so, so what does that Plus mean? your wisdom. Plus my wisdom? Yeah. Uh, that's a minus two. Okay. <laughs> so <Got this. laughs> with advantage with a minus two, I rolled an eight as my high roll, so six. <laughs> Here's my backup plan. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm gonna cast suggestion at um, at the mast at one of the masters and suggest you should chase that. If okay. it understands you, it doesn't suggest you don't have to understand it though. Oh, I will speak dwarvish to the mastiff when I say you should chase that. Um. Okay. Um... Fetch. So don't they need to make some kind of wisdom roll or something? Yes, uh, it so. is. What is suggestion? Target must make a wisdom saving throw, and my save is well, my save DC is twelve. Okay, give me one second to bring up Max Chip's dad's. Like, get it, basically. All right, so it's both a nine. All right, so you you mage hand the the homunculus over, and um, it takes like a couple of playful like enticements where you have, have it just out of reach. You kind of like wash it above his nose. He kind of perks up and is like, um, masters have really deep barks, and it. You see his tail wag, and you kind of just 
kind of lead him away. And um, the other dog, because there, there were two of them, looks at him like, what are you doing? And so the two of and then um, you bring the, the mage hand between them and then fling it off into the distance. <laughs> and the two dogs go chasing after it. So the yard is clear. You guys can make your attempt to cross the garden. And at that moment, that as soon as they start running, I start running towards the house as the raccoon. Okay. <laughs> um, are we going with them, or are we staying out here and letting the raccoon do all the exploration? Um, it's up to you. Yeah, I don't know what you're doing. I don't have a way to talk to him, so I'd I like was told to know to if you watch can... for the high sign, and if all things go bad, then and he just folds up a small vial. I just want to know if you have the the willpower to resist breaking in somewhere. I go. He's. <laughs> I, I, he's absolutely right. I, uh, this <laughs> can't go wrong. It's working so far. Right. Yeah, I, I, I mean, up. it does, it does look like if it ain't broke, fun. keep trying. <laughs> so, are you guys going to follow me? <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> I have no idea that you guys are going to follow me because I thought the plan was for me to go. So I, I think it's okay. perfect that you guys are like, let's go. That to. was the plan. <laughs> okay. So... I, I stopped being able to see you. <laughs> How am I supposed to get the high sign? You dart across the the field and you come to there's the there's um it's a it's a three story building. It's it's really big compared to, to all the houses you've seen. As this grand entrance, there are windows along the outside and there's probably like a back gate. Um do you have an, 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 a way you want to try to get in? Okay. Remute. So I'm looking for windows to see if there's a window that's open somewhere. Um, if there's like, because I can climb, raccoons can climb, so I'm going to climb up if I need to. Okay. And just let me know, I, I'll send you what I found because I looked up like a raccoon stats. <laughs> So here's the link. If you're okay with it, that's what I was going to use for the raccoon stats. Sure. Because they don't actually have that on D&D &D Beyond. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah. I have that one up too. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so there is a window that is cracked open a little bit on the second story. All right. Well, I'll use my climbing speed and I'll just climb up. Yeah, I mean, that's a raccoon. Raccoons can climb. Yeah. So. And then I'll just, I'll see if I can get, use my little hands to. Okay. The window <laughs> strength check to open it. Oh god. <laughs> they have a shitty strength. Is there like a tray board? Do you see like a um, a crawl space we could dive into? Make a perception it, check. I rolled a 17, but minus four puts it at 13, right? Yeah, 13. Okay, okay yeah, you managed to get it just enough purchase with your little raccoon hands and then squeeze under it. Yeah. And I look around the room and I sniff the air, see if I can smell anybody nearby. You have um, basically landed in um, the, you recognize the scent as their steward's room. His name is Terowin. What do we think about Terowin? What do we know about him? He is, I mean, he, usually is just a man doing a job uh he thinks well of his employees employers employers um if if anyone's watched downton abbey it's it's like their steward you know he he thinks he is proud of his position um and he respects the the dolomites and thinks well of them um mm -hmm. he's he, but he's always polite. Like um, he was raised strictly enough to always be polite. Um, so he's just very like studious and kind of like neutral person. All right, I'll try to sneak out of his room, and I'm sure we know enough about their place to figure out where their where their workshop is, or where they would store their car. We've probably seen them at some point over the last so many years of pulling the car. Mm -hmm you know, out and into a certain area of the house. Yeah. You, um, 
we're walking around. I have a couple of. I do have a stealth, so I need to make stealth yeah, checks. Yeah, let me see if you actually run into anyone. Ooh, I rolled a good stealth roll. Okay, yeah, the oddly, um, so you creak open the door, you look around. It's probably the servants' quarters. It's very quiet, which is weird given how big the house is. You'd think they'd need a large staff to upkeep it. Uh, so you. You managed to um, stealth out into the hallway and get to the top of the stairs that either go up or down. And we'll go back to Traybar and Grandpa Cog. So you're looking for an entrance, like a cellar entrance? Yeah, or you know those, um, in a modern house, you would have like the little screens right by the base to let the air Yeah, yeah, under. okay. Something Make like that where we can get under the house or into the basement if there's one, something like that. Make it a perception check. Both of you are looking. Four. <laughs> I'm, I'm too busy looking for raccoon bargos. I got a, a six perception. Grandpa, I don't I don't see oh, him anymore. It's Am I five. supposed to do the thing? It's a five. I don't see I, I don't know what's going on. Do the thing? Am I am I supposed to do the thing? You, you want to do the thing, do the thing. What could possibly go wrong with you doing the thing? You do not find any cellar entrances or windows that would lead to a lower level. Okay. Um, so you don't, don't blow, don't blow a hole in the side of the house yet. <laughs> Bargos did say if you start hearing crazy sounds, that's when you yeah, yeah, yeah. do it. So I'm keeping the, the vial of nitroglycerin. Um, but I am definitely going to lay some black powder down next to the base of the wall and firebolt it. Okay. Um, how familiar are you with black powder? Um, familiar enough? I'm trained in firearms and stuff. Okay, yeah, you'd know. Okay, yeah. Make a, Just make an intelligence check to... Um... Gauge Ooh, how much natural black... 20. Okay. Plus three. You get exactly the right amount of powder to put down. You're like down to like the ounce. You light that sucker up and there's just this quite little when you go and you kind of jiggle the handle of the door. We're in. Yep. All right. So you're on the, the first floor and uh, Marcos is on the second floor. So we'll say, where did you enter? What side of the house did you enter from? Front, back, east, west? Who, me? Both both parties. Well, wherever you think the window would have been. That would have been slightly open, depending on where the uh, servants' quarters are, I guess. Um, you were at the, yeah, you entered from the back side, and then Traybar and, Ka, and uh, Bar, Traybar and Grandpa can. Yeah, I, say, I assume we would have gone over the fence at the same spot that we let Vargos through. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So you also enter from the back. So we'll say that you actually enter the um, kitchen and you, you creak it open and you, there are active, there's someone actively cooking in here. It seems that they have just stepped out. Because there's a pot boiling on the stove. You can see them just cut up vegetables. And you can hear some some humming from the other room. Just... And you can reasonably assume that it's probably the cook. And okay. you, you hear the humming getting louder. Grandpa, uh, we gotta go. Okay, where? I, that way. Let's go. And um, you see the, the door handle starting to turn as, and there's only like, there's pretty much only one door. Oh yeah. Oh. I know. Trebar didn't think, he just pointed. Yeah, so there's there's the door you came through and the door that is currently almost opening. So what do you guys do? Uh, we're small enough to hide in the cupboards, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, there it is. I, I open the nearest bottom cupboard and step inside. <laughs> Perfect. Stealth check. 
<laughs> Woo! Nat 20. Nice. I got a total wow. of 17. Okay, yeah. You guys both just grab grab handle and then step inside. And luckily there isn't really a lot of pots or pans in either of the, the cupboards you stepped into. And you outside you can hear footsteps of um someone that is around probably your size and you kind of peek open the, the cupboards you see a gnome and you i mean you've never met their cook before but you you watch him and he goes back to working at the stove and uh, you look between the there's um, you're gonna have to either sneak over to that door or cause a distraction so he doesn't notice you guys leaving the kitchen. Okay. Okay. You're in the is it, Trevor, Are you in the same cupboard with me? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think um, we'll both fit in one cupboard. So. I think you're in different cupboards. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh God, are we gonna have to? I got this. <laughs> Interpret got this. miming. I basically, <laughs> I'll cast, I'll crack the door and I'll cast Mage Hand that basically at, at the level of the floor uh-huh. and have it go over to the back door, knock and disappear. Ooh, okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Um, roll a, a persuasion check. It's going to be a low DC because it's. But it's a little unusual to knock at the back, but not very unusual. So, nine plus four is thirteen. Okay, yeah. He, the cook, hears the knock. Oh, who is? Wait, we have a delivery. And he hops down off his stool and then goes over to the the door. And you see him uh, turning to open the door, the back that, door. That's when when I, when that door starts to creak open. That's when I try and. Get out and go through yeah. the other door he came in. Okay. okay. Make a dexterity. Make a dex check. Because rolling okay. is fun. Ten plus two, twelve. Yeah. Um, I think that's fine. Like he's not expecting anyone to be in there. He's expecting the door. So you manage to just kind of pitter across the door and then slip behind it on the other side. And uh, Trevor, what are you doing? Um, all right, so <laughs> the, cook, the cook wanders away, and there, is there something actively cooking? Yeah, these that's probably some kind of soup, or um, he's cooking, it's he's boiling vegetables basically. Okay. We'll throw nitroglycerin at it. Please don't. No, so I'm I'm debating either causing it to overboil uh-huh. or turning off the stove. because um, I can snuff out light and uh, snuff out a candle, torch, or small campfire. Oh, okay, yeah. So I'm going to turn off the oven, basically, while he's answering the door, so he's going to have something else to distract him when he turns around okay. and make my way towards Grandpa. All right, yeah, so you can reach out, put it out, and uh, the cook comes back. Uh, well, maybe I was hearing things. I'm not sure. He comes back up, and he's um, looking at the stove. He's like, how did this go out? And he kind of, you see him just looking around, where did I put the matches again? And <laughs> yeah, so you're, you're out the door. And so I'll just say the two of you are um, in the hallway. Benji, do you want to talk to mom or work on the cart? Oh, no, I'm going to talk to mom. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm probably going to go into town. Okay. So, yeah, mom, <clears throat> Bonnie is cooking a... Why don't only tacos come to mind? <laughs> she makes tacos. And you haven't had tacos in a long time. Oh, it's, it must be Tuesday. It As must say, be Taco Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. Taco Tuesday. Was, What's yeah. that? We've never had tacos. What's that? 
Yeah, so she's busy, uh, like, <clears throat> drying up the, the taco meat. There's onions and uh, bell peppers and spices in it. And she looks over. Oh, hey, Benji. So, uh, did, I guess, Dad set up a room for you or something? Yeah, he, um, I think he went and cleaned his room out for me. I... I think he only got part of the way done, but he agreed to clean out his room. I haven't actually gone and looked at it, and she uh, sets aside her her utensils. Should we go look at it? Well, we may need to get your stuff from your flat in, in town. Yeah, that that's true. That's true. I'll have to take care of a few things over there if I'm going to be... Do you want to go into town for a little bit? I mean, the tacos can wait. It's not like you can't just reheat them. Yeah, we can we can go to town. <clears throat> you know that uh, that that widow. And she thinks for a minute, and she's just like Dorothea. Yeah, Dorothea. <laughs> she's a slow blink. Yes. <laughs> My sen- my sentiments exactly. But I'm suspicious that she might be working for the Dolomites. Because she was brought up in conversation with... With... Uh, when I was talking to the two, the two Dolomite heads of the house. I don't remember their names. They have complicated names. It's Grafton and Miss Corthia. Yeah, with Gratchet and, and Miss Cordia. Cortia. Cortia. Miss Cortia. Miss Cortia. <clears throat> oh. And I thought it was interesting that they brought her up. Because you know she's been kind of Herself. after me for a long time. Uh, well, we can certainly go do our own investigation I I think there's some things we need to learn that I I don't think the boys should be involved in these kinds of activities you know they're just they're they're good kids you know doing doing the right things now now they're on the straight and narrow after the earlier distraction that they that they had (laughs) I'm sure you got through to them what I'm sure you got right through to them. <laughs> she kind of like, I'm sure I did. I'm sure yeah, that off- <laughs> I won't hear from the Burgermeister or the Constable at all today. <gasps> only if we get caught. <laughs> yeah, only if they get caught. <laughs> oh my God, and Grandpa's with like us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's She's fine. Just Grandpa her got fingers behind her back. You know? Grandpa got distracted and wandered off, and we had to go find him. <laughs> he wandered right into the Dolomite's house. Right. In the you know cupboard. familiar places. <laughs> well, my pony can take two, so we can ride down. Okay, we can ride down. I don't think I have a horse. Or a pony. No. I mean, not a horse for sure, but I don't think I, I think have we a had pony. to sell the horses to, to deal with all the debt. To buy a new <laughs> dog. Uh, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Before we switched over to beans. <laughs> we used to eat other food. Now it's just beans. That's... So why don't we go uh, visit Dorothea? Yes. That's and it'd be good if you were with me so that there's like a little buffer. Keep her back, but keep the information flowing. Because mm-hmm. okay. I hate seeing her without anyone else. Yeah, I've, I've had... More than one conversation with her. Um, Because at some point she did live here with you guys. Um, And the same people have, who, the same people who lived there then are still here now. So you guys ride down. Yeah. um, And you go to Dorothea's house. Well, it's a work day. Would she be working somewhere? Does she work or is she, uh, you know, does she just stay at home? Um, we'll say that she is a seamstress that has like a shop and then lives above it. Okay. And I, 
I pop a button off my shirt off my shirt. Okay. And I pick Just... up the button. All right, how are we playing this? Are we Oh, I lost a button. I need to get okay. it fixed. Maybe it's, keep her It's one of the top buttons, right? Just one undoing top that top button, button for her. Actually, that was a good idea. Yeah, it'll be the top button. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, so <clears throat> you guys go into the shop. Little bell ring. Um, there are her many, many cats all over like the front. They're sunbathing and um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> immediately sneeze. And um, Bonnie goes and rings the desk bell, and you hear the slow pitter patter of. Dorothea and Dorothea also walks weird like she walks like in tiny little steps and hmm. so it takes her ages to get like anywhere and so eventually she comes down the stairs and and she, she has stairs too oh yeah <laughs> so you're just like sitting there in the like her uh, seems her. I guess that she she would have things on display too, like just generic kind of. Is she wearing one of those hoop skirts so we can't tell that her knees bend backwards or anything? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, she she oh. has a hoop skirt that's just like wide enough, and uh, she comes down. Um, she has this like kind of. There's almost she's a little pitiful because she has a bit of a palsy in one hand, um, and. <laughs> She comes down and she sees you, Benji, and she's like, "Oh, Benji, I'm so happy." Well, I needed to get a button fixed, and I knew right where to go. Oh, you charmed me as. Much as you ever do, dear Benji. And then she comes in close to you, and and there's like way too much touching, like way more than necessary. As she like looks at your shirt, and... I can show you where it is. You don't have to feel your way to it. <laughs> oh well, it helps me with my work. <laughs> it's the top button right here, and I and I lift the shirt out a little bit to show it. Uh huh. And also to show the button missing on the shirt. I see. Well, do you wish to move your shirt so I can work on it? <laughs> and I stare for a moment at, at the mistake I made in this plan. <laughs> and I and I I look over at Ma. Uh, and give me a second. And I turn around to unbutton. Uh -huh. Like, oh, and I'm like really Dorothy is just kind of like <laughs> know, bringing your hands together. <laughs> it's like, and I know behind me, it's actually gross. Like, yeah, it's just so way too much. And so creepy. And, and I, we're gonna have pull the shirt back, <laughs> and I make sure that I do it slow enough that she can hear like boom chicky wow wow music in her head. Yeah. <laughs> and then. Pull it off, and then I hand it back without turning around. Uh -huh. it, it, and then I then I turn around, and she gets to see my gnomish bare chest. <laughs> she, you know my, what else she saw? All those scars on your back, that, those manly scars you got from all the engineering accidents. <laughs> they're all, they're not scars; they're burns. <laughs> all the accidents are burns anymore. After the water thing, everything's gone to fire. <laughs> Only some of them are from me. <laughs> yeah, all, all but one. <laughs> <laughs> so the shirt is there. Do you have a button that will match, do you think? Or we have to change all of the buttons to a new set or something? So while you're being just while you're distracting Dorothea, Bonnie is like quietly slipping behind the um, the counter. And um, like just pulling open drawers, <laughs> and then do you see her motion like keep it going, keep it so, going. And and I look at Dorothea, and I and I I notice when she like either blinks or looks down a little bit. And I'm gonna go. Um, my eyes are up here. <clears throat> I know. <laughs> she 
she's made her choice. <laughs> yeah. And then she says, oh, I think we need to do a full set of new buttons. Unfortunately. And then, like, she actually just, like, breaks it in her hand. And she's like, it's broken. And then she... <laughs> She um she's about to like turn around and um like so my do you want me to come on and sit over there and I turn to the other direction to keep her from looking over that way do I I should sit there while we go over the buttons and whatever yes, else yes, is required sit there. Sit and when I do I'll I'll you know get over there and I'll pull a ch seat up. And put it in front of me with the back away from the other part of the, the room. Okay. So that I make sure she's sitting facing away from the rest of the room. But at only me with with the wall behind me. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> so as you distract her, Bonnie like steps back from behind the counter to like just kind of like lean on the front of it. It's hitting me of cool. And, and uh, Dorothea says, I must get my... She goes, Do you want me to get them? Are, are they upstairs? Oh, if you are. Make a persuasion check. She wants you to go with her. I'm offering to go with her. Oh, man, if you go up there, you might be in trouble, oh, buddy. 22. Oh, what a gentleman to help me look. Yes, it's a I'm like Morgan Freeman say, at this moment, he realized... He <laughs> and we're gonna go well, back to their team okay <clears throat> so we're back to Fargo's um you don't see anyone in the second for uh second floor and let me uh he plans to make so. his way down towards the, yeah. the bottom floor you go down and yeah, it's pretty clear. All right. I'll just roll one of these. Okay. And you... <laughs> we'll see. Oh, yeah. You go down the stairs. The kitchen's right there. So you see Trey Bar and Grandpa Cogs come, like, basically, like, rushing out of the kitchen and then, like, shutting the door, like, shh. You, you guys see Bargos on the stairs. He looks at you guys, tilts his head, and then just goes with his paw. <laughs> he's so cute and then he'll just like head, run ahead of you guys towards the um... actually he'll do this <laughs> with, his little, with his little finger and then he'll run ahead of you guys like trying to scout ahead okay <clears throat> and um, just make um, a perception check to find the, the workshop alright just no. Fargo. Just me or all of us. Also, oh, all of you guys. Yeah, that's fine. Also, these workshops have a sense of smell. I would think all the oils. Yeah, the oil. Yeah. So maybe mm -hmm. maybe advantage since I have a advantage on those kind of things yeah, related. Yeah, sense that's fine. Right. <laughs> Ooh, seventeen plus five. So, yeah, it's what twenty three, twenty two, twenty three. Yeah, with that, you find the workshop. Like, um, you have to go through the dining room and then the lobby, past some bedrooms, and finally you get to um, kind of this tools room. Like, you sniff at each door, you're like, that smells like a bedroom, that smells like just um, a different room. And, and then you get to, again, you know, you, you're used to the smells, even as, like, Fargo's is normal form, you'd probably know the smell. But definitely as a raccoon. So you opened the uh, the room, <clears throat> and the workshop is similar to yours, but bigger. It has newer equipment and better tools, and it's nicer in general. And you actually kind of ogle at their state of the art elevation system to work on projects. Um, all three of you are in there, by the way. So. Uh, right now, there appears to be a prototype of their current cart. Uh, so let's everyone make perception checks in this room. We should okay. steal the prototype. <laughs> also, two questions for the GM. Yeah. One, 
does that lady use cat hair for thread? <laughs> um, uh, that's disturbing. I, I mean, is, if, she, but... if she could figure out a way to thread to use it that way, she probably would, but I don't think you can do that. She'd have to, like, just kind of, like, Huh. Knotted strands. Sorry. Yeah, it um, would be a very coarse thread, so I don't think I think she would have tried, but like it didn't work. And how much of my black powder did I use? You uh, not very much because okay. you weren't a small con controlled explosion. So I would say not very much. So while I'm investigating, I could like pour some in the open holes of their machinery. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could. All right, Dad so, said not to. Vargas would say with his hands, like, no, don't do that. What? Like, <laughs> so you, what were the perception checks? Oh, I didn't mean, roll mine. Uh, I rolled in that. Uh, 16. 16? Uh, 16, 17, 18. 18. I gotta, I gotta remember, I gotta use the raccoon stuff. And I'm like, wait, what is it? Yeah, <laughs> Grandpa Cogs. A 10. Net 10. Okay, 10. Your eyesight isn't what it used to be. It is not. So you are, mm -hmm. um, with a 10, you are looking around and you notice this, like, weird contraption. Like, it seems like there's this, they took wire and coiled it around a nail, and then they, like, attached it to this other cylinder thing, and there's, like, a couple different versions of it so you're like whatever oh, this is damn. they tried a number of different versions of it you're not sure what it is but you're like this seems important the 16 you uh notice that there's uh in the prototype you can see like um at the nose of it there's kind of like a shelf and usually it's just hollow uh, but you notice that there's a distinct shelf and you're like wow interesting that's weird the 18 notices, you're looking at the books, and you notice that there's a a book entitled How to Talk to Poor People, A Gentleman's Guide. <laughs> and well, they seems, didn't read that one. <laughs> it seems fairly wide for a subject that shouldn't take long to cover. Um, so, um, you... Uh, the raccoon hand, you go and you approach it and you kind of like pull at it and then there's this little like click and the door, the, there's a um, a lift on the bookcase and it swings and you, there's a hidden door behind it. Wow. Good job. I heard weird noises. Weird noises! It's time! Then you turn around you see the, the <laughs> hidden door. Um, Grandpa Cog is holding one of the weird contraptions. Um, make... Let's see, I would say Trey Bard needs to make the, like, oh, tinkering... God. The uh, intelligence oh, or tinkering okay. check. Alright, tinkering I can do. Uh, so... 13, 16, 19 tinkering. You look at what Grandpa has in his hands, and you're like, that's an electromagnet. What? Sus. This is... Yeah, that's weird. That's weird. Um, and it's extremely sophisticated stuff for this age. Um, Grandpa Cog, go and you approach the... Uh, the, the secret door. Okay. And um, you notice that there's kind of like this little, uh, it's almost like a magnifying glass. Oh, I'm used to those. Yeah, so you, you approach it and there's this little light that seems to just kind of like wave over you. And you hear a fur, fur, access denied. Okay. Sure would be a shame if this door blew up, huh? Nobody's shaking their head no. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to check something. So, 
you you said Bonnie was a dwarf. Yeah. We're rock gnomes. Which yeah. means Scott is part dwarf and Trebar is part dwarf. Yeah. Sure. So if I if grandpa was smart enough, he might try to get Trebar to go into the light if he could figure out that maybe this has something to do with the dwarven security system. Okay. Um, yeah, you uh, can pull over trait bar, have him look at it. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you're, the, you're the big one. Or could be first one, you get a warning. Second one, you get an explosion. <laughs> You've been looking forward to an explosion, right? <laughs> if it goes off, you're all coming with me. <laughs> So uh, it... Bargos will go to the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll go stand in the, the security light. Okay, so this it scans you. Uh, access denied. And then you start hearing a... There, there's like a, a countdown initiated until alarm goes off. So you see the door like has just uh, like a 30 second like... 29, 29. Is there any is there any wires that are connected to the top of that thing? Make an investigation check. Hey, natural nineteen. Yeah, there there are you because you pulled the the book. Mm -hmm. You know that there are probably more wires behind the shelves. So we'll say that you go over there, and, and I'll um, tr start trying to rip the wires apart to stop the alarm from going off. So you pull out the wires. The alarm goes off. Uh, it stops. It like pauses. At, I was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> pauses at nineteen. <laughs> You're not supposed to pull it till it hits one. <laughs> Where's the drama at nineteen? <laughs> you got to pretty quick. All right, so we will see if we can open the door. Yeah. Maybe we can play with the wires. I'll like point at the wires, like you know. Maybe okay. guys can figure out how to make the wires work to. Pop the door open. The door is the is the lock metal. Yeah. I'll cast heat metal at the lock. Ooh. Okay. okay. Yeah. And I have Smith's tools. Can I reshape the lock? There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Collectively, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'll say I'll... that you cast it, and um, he has advantage on his smithing check. And I'll be watch. I'll be on the lookout. So I'll go by the other door, just kind of like with a cracked open, peek out and listen. You know, see if my base kind of while they're doing this stuff. All right. So a nineteen for a twenty-five total. All right. Yeah. So collectively, you guys managed to open up this secret door. Secret door. Secret door. Secret door. Secret door. And Not inside. So now. Yeah. Inside, you find a workbench with this schematic on it. So you Ooh. go in there and you look at it. <clears throat> inside is a detailed account of how they would incorporate an electromagnetic electromagnet into their cart. So what they do is they have it in the nose and then um, they actually have the it wired to the back of the chair and then the helmet create completes the circuit. So when he puts his helmet back, it completes the circuit and then notes it says, um, the electromagnetic will pull the cart towards the metal finish line as it nears. Okay. Hmm. While you're there stewing, Bargos, you begin to hear footsteps and hear the voice of Brafton. Oh, it's definitely time to go. I look. Vargas is waving that we're going to be caught. I know that sign. <laughs> <laughs> is that it? Is that the high sign? Isn't I will it? like, uh, I, I grab, I, if there's any like pen or paper, I will write, give me like, because I can write because I, I'm, I'm me inside of this body. Uh -huh. I will write on a piece of paper, give me the schematics and I'll run out the door. And that way they can chase after me and you guys can oh. use that as a. I, I was like, I'd rather just leave with everything. I I, I, I just like try to back like Trebar, we need to go and kind of just shut the door, leaving the schematic there without without disturbing it. Because I, I would love 
my character would love to get out of here without anyone knowing we were here. Mm. Dad would prefer that too. Okay, so Grandpa my under it. my understanding of an electric electromagnet, the piece that's on the front where the shelf is, needs to slide, right? In order to function. I mean Um sorry, I got a lag spike. So no, electromagnetic you're fine. So when the the driver's head connects to the seat, mm -hmm. it forms the setup. And then yeah. the end magnet needs to slide forwards where it's attacked where it's attracted to the the metal finish line, right? Yeah, basically. Basically, yeah. So it, it pulls the cart towards the metal finish line. So is there any way I can reach inside where that front magnet is? Um the the cart, the finished cart isn't in here. Oh right, that's the prototype. Yeah, it's the prototype. I, yeah, I I think we're I think we know their plan. I think we can stop it without messing this up. Now we know what we're up against. Okay. We should just try and get out of here. Is there any way else out of here besides the stairs going down? Um, there are windows. Yeah, there are just windows. I. I. Go to, the, go to the nearest window and look and see if there's any mastiffs outside. Um, they... They are outside. They're on that side of the yard. They're uh, walking around. Uh, you can see that one of them has the homunculus in its mouth. And... No! Uh... Gerald! Gerald! <laughs> <clears throat> so what do you do he's he's coming closer we we need to get out of here i um um what was they cooking in the the kitchen it was a We'd stew have to or... go past them right to get to the kitchen yeah um i will cast invisible servant to block the front door while we giving us time to open up a window and get out of here um so you're locking the front door of the house or the front door of the the door workshop. into this room the workshop. workshop workshop okay yeah all right so not locking but just like being there as a force like someone goes to open like what what's going on there's something here uh-huh okay and a strength so... check with an unseen servant is pretty easy to beat so i don't think it'll take more than it's not gonna take long for them to beat it that's fine yeah, if we can get the window open i can feather fall us so that we're quiet going down yeah all right so you guys scurry over the window um Ooh, feather fall how much do we weigh when we're feather falling we the length the weight of a feather <laughs> then uh, why don't we have mage hand push us over the wall. Um, because as soon as you land on anything that you could stand on, the spell ends. Got it. Yeah. So, okay, so you guys are going to the window, you open it, um, you hear Grafton um, on the other side of the door like, I say, what's wrong with this door? Um, did you guys <laughs> close the, the uh, secret door and stuff? I... We'll roll to see if I remembered. You know, you said you were closed. You said you were no, going to close it. I wanted to. You're right. I did. Okay, so he closed it, and you guys are getting the the window open. So you're piling out the window. I'll have craft and roll a strength check. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, he rolled a natural sixteen. Well, uh, the unseen servant has a strength of two. Okay. <laughs> So have him, I guess we'll have him roll too. What, what I can do, if I see them, if I see them trying to go out and, and him pushing in, I'll try to make, as soon as he starts pushing, I'll run underneath his feet to run out to the rest of the house to kind of pull his attention towards me. Okay. Okay. So um, Grandpa and Trebar, 
need to make dex checks to get out the window in time. And then Morgan, you need to make a uh, like a performance check or some kind of check to get his attention. Okay, the straight check of the unseen servant. A 17, which is not going to be good enough because there's probably with a two strength, probably have like what minus five or six. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then my dexterity check is a three with a just dexterity. Oh, it's an eight then. Yeah, my dexterity is a six. So okay. I I'm ready. I got the I got the vial. I'm ready to go. Okay, Morgan, what did you roll for your distraction? I mean, I was, I don't know what I was doing for, I mean, I was just going to go, <laughs> like, run out underneath and make noise. I, didn't know, I mean, I would assume a big-ass raccoon running between your feet would be enough as a distraction. Um, I rolled. That's, what would, the distraction would be under, you said, performance? Yeah. So then it would be a 12, because I have a minus two in the raccoon form for charisma. Yeah. Uh, so, no, you keep mental. Uh, you keep into oh, charisma, don't you? That's right. That's well, it's, then it's minus one. It's minus one then, so it'd be a thirteen. Okay. All right. So he rolled at disadvantage because there's a raccoon, and um, so he's opening the door and he sees this big raccoon just run out and he's like, ah. Oh! And and you dart down the hall. The um, the other two are scrambling to. I run up back to where I came from is where I'm heading to, how I got in. Yeah. The other two, it takes you both like a minute to reassemble yourselves, but you do manage to get out and Trayvar and Grandpa are now on the outside. So then Vargos, you run up to the second story and um, Grafton is coming after you. Uh, he, um... I have, in this form, I have a 30%, a 30 foot movement. So I'll be moving and dashing, you know, <laughs> moving full speed to get out that window. Um, when we get out the window, I basically say, Trayvon, let's go. And I start moving towards the fence to get out of here. Yeah. So you guys dart across the, the fence. Um, the dogs chase you. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I I I have one thing I want to do to the dogs. Okay. Is I'm gonna cast sleep at them. Nice. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay. And I'm gonna use I'm gonna use a third level slot to cast. Sleep. I don't think you even need to do that, but all right. I don't do not want to be mauled by a mastiff. Go for it. Okay. I think that's gonna be seven. Hold on, I'll tell you that it's gonna <laughs> It's overkill for sleep. Third level, you said? Yeah, so that's nine dice? Yeah, ninety-eight. All right, well, just don't roll uh, nine ones. I think you, you'll be able to put them to sleep. You don't yeah, it just you don't even need to roll. It just they just go to sleep. If All you right. cast it that high. I don't know what kind of mastiffs they are. I just was like, we gotta get out of here. <laughs> so you you play your um sitar um and then the mastiffs fall asleep. And you guys scramble back over the gates, and Vargos joins you after uh, screwing up the fence. Actually, and... I have a little pouch of sand I use for the sleep spell. Gotta oh, be, okay. Gotta okay. be quiet with that. <laughs> and we'll go back to Benji. Can we take a quick bio break? Yeah, <clears throat> bio break. Sounds great. All right. <laughs> we'll be back we in get it. Sort of. <laughs> Uh, Morgan, I was able to add my character to the campaign.
And we're back. No, you should say that. That's for we're you. We're back. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. So we just had Trey Bar Bargos and Grandpa Cogs escape the Dolomite estate with knowledge of the how the Trey Bars are cheating. Um, I'm gonna have how uh i'm gonna have trey bar make another uh intelligence check on electromagnet so to see if you would okay know. Ooh, another nat 20 that's okay. tinker check yeah so 26. okay so you know that for the electromagnetic device to work he has to complete the circuit by placing his helmet against the the back of the the seat so if unless he's in it in that position the magnet is not active okay so you couldn't expose it that way unless you had it set up unless you had the helmet also yeah um and would any use of absorb elements stop that from happening like break the connection Oh, that's cool. Um, mm. That's possible. I would say that's possible. I mean, in a weird zone, but sure, yeah, I would say that's possible. You haven't ever done it, so you're not sure, but you think theoretically it's it's definitely possible. Okay. Good. And that we're going to go back to Benji, who is being awkwardly seduced by Dorothy and the <laughs> seamstress. And you... <laughs> Go up the stairs to her um, living quarters slash storage room, and uh, she goes and there's some shelves, and she pulls out like a jar, like a couple jars of buttons, basically. And she says, "Oh, uh, square or uh, round? I think I have some." unusual shapes too let's maybe it's see an unusual shape okay um uh, while you're you're doing that downstairs we're gonna have bonnie do an investigation check all over the place oh she got 18 cool so she very subtly and just goes through and sifts through her her files and she finds um a note that reads um we um we meet uh tonight uh, uh at the town fountain and uh, bring have the cats meet me there <laughs> and, and um she um goes and looks through like uh she pulls a couple other drawers open and she finds uh just like this stash of like things and knickknacks valuables anything that could be like pond and they're all small things small enough for a cat to take so rings uh jewelry <laughs> Is she like a master robber with her cats? She's a yes. cat burglar. She's a cat burglar. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, so. Wait, wait, wait. She... Tiffany, you're not a dad. You can't make those bad dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wearing the seal of approval. <laughs> She's an honorary dad tonight. Wow. I love it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> and um, so she quietly kind of tucks that away but she'll take the note and um and, and kind of like tuck it into her her pocket um and uh, upstairs um dorothea is showing you like all sorts of buttons there's one that's like shaped like the actual heart organ and then she she's like oh i would give my whole heart to you if you'd take it <laughs> <laughs> uh as enticing of of um a taking as that would be 
I really am in a bit of a hurry. I need to just get the buttons taken care of. And uh, how about round? And I hand her round buttons. Yes. Always the customer. And then she, she goes to, she she sews the buttons on, and it's a painful like twenty minutes. And yeah. For her to sew all the buttons, and she like keeps making eye contact with you, especially since she has like one really bad lazy eye that keeps like sh- like screwing out of place, and, and you're just like, yeah, exactly. That's pretty much how I am. Like, like, are you looking at me? No, oh no, no, you're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she um, brings the the shirt over back to you, and she says, "Come back in." And she'll like I will. touch your your. <laughs> she, she doesn't know. She'll she'll touch your your bare door, chest and and say it's all the house. <laughs> and I put the shirt on. Thank you. Um, we'll be on our way. Uh, you're doing a great job as a seamstress. Oh. And I you. go down the stairs faster than she goes down the stairs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And um, you catch Bonnie in the middle of her snooping. She kind of like turns around and like tries to act really casual. Okay, mom, you ready to go? I'm ready to go. Yes, dear. Yes. And then um, she just kind of like quietly like puts the drawer back. And then um, uh, you hear, uh, you know, Dorothea trying to keep up. And she's like, oh, come, come again. Anytime. Okay, next time I have a broken, broken button. She, thank you. She's gonna curse you like... with broken buttons forever. <laughs> right. Yeah. I'm still not coming back. Yeah. So you guys get out of, out of that. <clears throat> um. And um. So uh, gum, tree bar, Bargos, and Grandpa Cogs. What do you do now? Make our way home. I. Th- oh wait. Do we actually need material? No. No. We should get yeah. something so we're not suspicious. Yeah, that's a good point. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta fool my son. Okay, so <laughs> you head over to the general store. Hey, isn't that dad coming out of the seamstress shop? <laughs> yep. Yeah, you see Benji and Grandma Bonnie coming out of the the seamstress shop. And Why is his he, shirt all wrinkly? <laughs> And I'm buttoning it as I'm flying out. <laughs> <laughs> I heard okay. that he was like talking to the lady. Isn't that there. the weird lady? Yeah, the weird cat lady. Man, I swear she took one of my homunculi once. <clears throat> Try to use it as a button or what? I don't. I don't. I don't really know. I don't know if she knew what she was grabbing. Oh, there are many mysteries to Dorothea. <laughs> All right, are you guys trying to, like, not be seen by Dad? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Make your stealth checks. <laughs> I'm not in raccoon form, and I am terrible now. I rolled a five. Let's see what my bonuses are. Three. No. So eight. Okay. <laughs> All right. 22. If I see them, I'm going to act like I did not see them. And keep okay. going. I got a one for a total of seven. I think with your okay. passive perception, you would notice them. So you see them kind of on the corner of your eye, and they they like very obviously like stop and then like shuffle backwards around. <laughs> it's something so obvious, it's hard yeah. to miss. Yeah. <clears throat> and, and Bonnie, you think he saw us? <laughs> no, definitely not. Not at all. <laughs> All I can ever think of is, you know those ghosts from Haunted Mansion, the Eddie Murphy movie? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's looking right at me. <laughs> <laughs> um, we should get back. Um, what do you think? Did Actually, she, did you learn anything? I think she's... I think she's been stealing from the town. And getting it to the Dolomites. She pulls out the, the piece of paper. And getting she it. Says, oh. Yeah. I think 
she's been having her cats steal valuables. And, you know, if we can compare this to, I, I think this is Miss Corthea's, Miss Corthea's writing, but I haven't seen it in a long time. This could be it. If we <clears throat> compare it, we might be able to expose them. Hmm. We should expose them. That's not right. But should we do it before or after the derby? Because we do want to beat them. We don't want them to be disqualified before. I mean, it's your call. I'll talk to the boys about it. But I think we want to do it after. We have to beat them. You want to beat them and then humiliate them? Yes. Okay. Who'd be against that? thought Dad would, but... It's dad's plan. Not right now. <laughs> all right. So are, I think we, we, are we all probably, good meeting at the house? Yeah. Yes. Like, I think all we right. would have gone and picked up like some bolts or whatever. Like, yeah. With, you know, just extra bolts. Hit it back. I mean, you needed bolts, actually, because I was going to have you make them. So that's save, that's save. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So Perfect. you all meet back at the house. And um, it's a... Uh, you... <laughs> You see Dad and Bonnie, like, ahead of you on the road. And I tell her, don't look back now, but the boys and and, and Dad are following us back to the house. They were in town. Does she resist the urge? Uh, I'm, I don't know. She says, should we walk slower just to make it annoying? Should we what? <laughs> should we should we walk slower just to make it frustrating? Yes, that would that would suffice. That would be yeah, a good and, idea. Yeah, and and they're on I think they're the walking pony. slower. Okay, like so they're going slow on the pony. Like they have absolutely no need to go slow, but they are. Every I, now and then we I, stop and smell some roses or yeah. <laughs> daisies. I think they do on purpose. We should Is just she... pass them. Is Grandma's pony sick? Like. <laughs> We should just pass them. Okay, so um, Bargos, you catch up to them. Oh, Bargos, <laughs> I didn't know you were in town. What? I mean, we had to go pick up some bolts. <laughs> yes, bolts. <laughs> By the way, Dad, I used my ability to talk to animals and got a raccoon to go into their house. I know you were a little concerned about it. But I think the raccoon found out some information. Make a deception check. It's disadvantage because it's your dad. <laughs> is it a lie though? It Somewhat. is a lie because he didn't talk to a raccoon. He went in himself. As a so, raccoon. I guess that's fair. <laughs> I rolled a 17 for the first roll. The second roll is a 13. My deception is minus two. So, oh, no, it's minus one. Okay. So it's a 12. Uh, Benji, as his father, you know that he's telling a half truth. Ah, so, so let me let me understand what happened. You went to the Dolomites, turned into a raccoon, and went in to see what they were up to. Did I, did I miss? I got, did I miss the word? I, did I miss it? Like what you that said? Is, that's pretty much everything that's happened. Nothing else happened other than that. That's that's what happened. Ah, uh, where, where's your brother at? Because that would be the other really? part of what happened. <clears throat> Hi. Uh, oh, and grandfather's back there too, of course. Yeah, he he said you were walking slow, so he wanted to take a break. So you had to wait for him this time. <laughs> so you, <laughs> I hear you got the bolts you needed, right? Hold up the bag again, all awkwardly. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> So, <clears throat> how are we going to beat them this year? I have an idea. Without cheating? No, but with... they're cheating. What? They're not cheating. Cheat? I know they're what cheating. We just, what well, if we know we how just, they're cheating. What if we just turn off their cheating? Does that still count as cheating? Not at all. Well, I tried doing it earlier, and you yelled at me for it. So. No, you tried to break their 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 tool their <clears throat> car. I'm not talking about breaking the car, but if they're cheating, it's okay for their cheating to not work. That is an acceptable solution. 
from, from what Grandpa and Traybar were telling me, it looks like they're using some type of magnets to move their car. Yeah. You know, one thing that could also work would be to have it not work and have it be obvious to the competition committee. What, what the, if? So that they get caught in it too. Not just they lose, but they lose and get caught. What? All right. So what if we just put something over the finish line to make it not magnetic? Because that's what they're doing, right? Using the finish line as their their pulling point. Yeah. Yeah, essentially, yeah. So, so is is it the finish line made out of metal, or is there something underneath the finish line, like a metal bar in the ground? Um, I think that there's. Um, it's kind of like. Um, Yeah, I'll just say it's like a metal bar along the ground. It forms the, like the, the breaking point of the finish line. Hmm. I, I'm hoping I would be very familiar with the rules of the race, having watched us lose it 300 years in a row. <laughs> <laughs> I would hope so. 296 yeah. years in a row. True. It, is there rules against using magic? Um... Or just it's just yes, um, they don't. It's frowned upon to use magic. But they're not technically using magic; just very good science. Oh, yep. wait a minute! Don't you remember how the 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 villagers also hate technology? I mean, yes. So why don't we just expose them before the race of using technology? Well, I think it's not so much that they hate technology; they just. Hate but then they would technology. be disqualified. <laughs> they hate our technology. <clears throat> but then they would know. hate them. It doesn't matter if we win the race if, we, if people just hate them. <laughs> okay, have um, Benji make um, everyone just roll intelligence checks. Well, first, I did okay. Um, just Eight. trade intelligence sixteen. Flat 16 for me. Okay. 19. 19. Benji? 8. 8. Okay. So, um, as they're talking about magnets, Traybar, you remember that aluminum will um, not be a... If you replace the finish line with aluminum, it will appear the same, but not Okay. Yeah, like the the magnet will not react to it. That would be the the most hilarious thing. Like their car doesn't even move. Can, <laughs> can bards use scrolls? Um, what are you trying to do? Get some sort of transmute metal spell on a scroll and cast it to transmute the. Um, if they're the, using a metal. Perhaps we should do a test run tomorrow, break the bar, and have it replaced with wood. Ask the, yeah. the competition committee, since there's no other metal in, in the town, make sure we break it good, and have them replace it with wood. I can break it good. We just need an extra car. You, I mean, theoretically, you would have old cars. So we could test run an old old car... And have mm -hmm. a fluid leak. Yes. Make sure the car breaks, busts that that piece off and up, and repair it with. And actually, we should have some wood with us. Maybe. Actually, we shouldn't do it today. We should do it the day before the race, so there's no time for them to change their their car right. I mean we could do a I could do a thunder wave tonight or the night before break the metal or a couple days before break the metal turn into an animal run away so nobody sees me and then we could come down and replace it the next day with wood or an aluminum one 
That way we that way you know they think it's a new metal bar. But well, they also they said it's not being held here, right? It's being held at the resort. No, it's um. Or it's being held in town. <clears throat> yeah, it's being held on the outskirts okay. of town. Yeah. <clears throat> Well, they wouldn't I wreck any cars. I'm plum tuckered out from all this activity today, and I'm. He goes. I'm gonna go to my hammock and take a short rest. <laughs> okay. All right. So you guys go finish the walk home. Grandpa takes a nap. Bonnie. Yeah. You know what? I think there's. I think there's too much risk doing trying to change the bar. I think we should turn off their magnet somehow. I think you were right earlier, Trey Bar. I think their magnet needs to be non-working. Because I don't want them to to find a new way of cheating. I'd like them to stay concentrated on the one they're doing so that they lose from that and get exposed. Is there a way to make the, the metal not, you know, conductive for the magnet? So we could... Swap wouldn't, it for something aluminum. Wouldn't the tinkers know that if we heat it, it'll ruin it? It'll ruin it'll the kill the magnetism. Yeah. Yeah. So even oh. if you were to heat metal the magnet in the seat where the helmet connects, and that's got to be like readily visible, right? Oh, that's it. It's the helmet. We don't have to worry about the end. If that helmet, we just changed the metal in that helmet. There's no connection. That's all we have to do is just get rid of that helmet. Well, I mean, that's going to be kind of hard to do. That might be even harder than getting rid of the bar. Can you change into a flying creature? I cannot. Can you change into a throwable creature? I mean, anything's throwable if you try hard. A flying squirrel? <laughs> I could probably turn it into a flying squirrel. They don't fly, they glide. <laughs> hey, Rocky, go get the helmet. <laughs> I don't think I'd be able to carry the helmet in a squirrel form, though. You don't have to carry the helmet. All you have to do is get them to take it off. Or just take the magnet out of it. I mean, it's, honestly, it's gotta wait, be... if we heat the metal, or if we went down and heated the metal at night of the bar, that would take the magnetism out of the bar, yes? You're forgetting what we are so good at. Making smells. What if we made that helmet so unbearably stinky they had to take it off? <laughs> I can do that. But if we heat the, you said if we heated the metal, it would ruin the magnetism in it. Yes. Yeah, oh. heating metal will change the polarity of it. So now what we got to do is take the metal bar. Go down there. Don't, or, or, Grandpa. You can heat metal. Why don't I heat the metal in the helmet? Because that's noticeable and somebody might get hurt. If we do it the night before the competition, you go down. Do the bar. The metal bar. I agree, the bar. Without melting it. Know. Don't melt it. Just heat it up to where it destroys the magnetism in it, the polarity. And then they'll, when they put that helmet on, they won't even know. They'll just put it on thinking everything's <clears> good <throat> and it doesn't work. I and then everybody it. else takes off and then they're like stuck there and looking stupid. Grandpa's gonna say this is a fine idea, and he'll do whatever you say. But does that does that how it works? If you actually heat metal, it'll ruin the magnetism, or do you have to heat the magnet to ruin the magnetism? I don't know. Uh, I that's a science question, but um, we'll say yes, yeah, it'll work. Yes. Um, no, it says it says while cold strengthens magnets, I can rid of uh, properties. So heating iron to a high enough temperature, it loses its ability to be magnetized. Yeah, also rough handling, uh, passing alternative currents. So, like, I'll say that you guys, there are three things you guys need to do. You need to heat it, you need to hammer it, and you need to pass a thunder wave through it. That'll, and you feel confident that that will demagnetize it. Okay. Well, I can do the thunder wave easily. You guys can do all the other things, and then after you guys leave, I can thunder wave, and then I can animal form out so they don't even know who it was. How can you do the thunder wave with nobody noticing it? I do the thunder wave, and when everybody hears the noise, I'm already turning into an animal, and they don't know who was out there that did it. I can cast enthrall and make a big 
speech about how this is the year we're going to do it. And so everyone's eyes will be focused on me while he just, why, why my grandson will go ahead and save the day. Yes. <laughs> but what about the, ha right. the hammering? I have Smith's tools. And so when... hammering's not a problem. So it'll just be me and Grandpa sneaking down. He'll heat metal. I right. can hammer it out. And then the next, and then I can do the thunder wave thing. So, so let's build our cart, and get ready for it to to destroy them. Hey. They're so proud right. of you guys. Wake me up tomorrow and show me your progress. <clears throat> <laughs> and we cut to a montage of, like looking <laughs> over schematics and cutting the pieces and measuring them. And... Burn a burn. <laughs> oh, that's true. We have the schematics too. Yeah, you work at the schematics, so like you're assembling the pedals. Uh, you already got the bolts, so you don't need to forge those. You're putting, you know, you just pull out the old seat from the old cart, and you know we got someone just sanding it down, and um, then um, you guys um, pick up a a bucket or something for a helmet because. And the safety rules were added this year. <laughs> I wonder by who. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wake up from my nap and go down and bring them some tea in the workshop. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's late in the, in the night. The, the stars are out. You uh, can see Trey Bar and Bargos are just passed out. Uh, and it's just Benji, like, just sanding it at this point. You know, you are always more like your mom. I think that's why she, uh, why we, the two of us just didn't click. She just had the same sort of sense of right and wrong that you do, instead of the fluid nature that it really should be. But I'm proud of you, son. Clearly you raised two good kids and you're, doing your part to bring back the good name of the cogs. I really appreciate it. But I'm tired and I'm going to bed. I wish you well. See you in the morning. And uh, dream of winning big. I dream of that every night. Now, at some point when everybody's sleeping, I'd like to draw that taco gnome that, uh, <laughs> that is usually on the side of the car. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Taco gnome. Yeah, Talk so over, sure. over the montage of a few days, you yeah. guys make the cart, you make the gnome, and uh, do you want to, like, put the taco gnome on, like, as the cart art? Yes, that's the cart yeah, art. Cart the taco art. Gnome. <laughs> so I can do. Yeah. What do you name your, your cart? Nom nom. All right, nom nom. <laughs> you write nom nom on it. And, um... But it's spelled G-N-O-M. Yes. yes. Oh, no, I'm G N O M for sure. Because <laughs> yeah. it's hungry for a victory. Mm. <laughs> that actually, the tagline is right under it. Nom nom, <laughs> hungry for a win. Yeah. For the guys, win. Are you guys okay skipping to like the night before the competition? Yeah. Yes. Oh, all right, cool. So it's the night before the competition. The cart's ready to go. And you guys slip into the night to um, just basically destroy the magnetism in the finish line. So you guys go downtown and uh, you come to the raceway. There is um, no one around. It's, um, it's a farming town. So people go to bed early, you know? Mm. Um, and you don't see anyone at the racetrack, so you guys go over to the the metal bar ground. And it's just a field, so you guys can just walk over to it. Um, I I wanted to bring salt with us if that was okay. Yeah, you can bring salt. You just go to the kitchen and bring it with you. Yeah, you guys have salt at this point. I, I'm sorry, the four-legged salt. Oh, the dog? Oh, the dog. Yes. Yeah, you can oh. bring salt. Ah, could keep the cats away. 
And, right. Uh, Those thieving little cats. <laughs> we, did, did Dad tell us about that? Oh. Oh, maybe he didn't. Oh, I probably would have told Pappy and expected him to tell you. And that's all he does is talk. That's all I do is talk. Right. You know, tell him not to set, tell you boys, and then he'll obviously tell you kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> I'll play. See, yeah, even so- though I'm I'm a goody two-shoes, I actually have a really high wisdom. So I know how to work it to you properly. The channels. <laughs> All right, so we do know about the cats. We gotta be careful of the cats. Yeah, you uh, walk to the the raceway. You have to. No, you don't have to pass the town. The raceway is b- between you and the town, so you just go to the raceway and you're doing your work. And um, you think you can see um, something in the the distance like the flash of eyes <laughs> watching the field okay i will i will cast speak with animals <laughs> and, and i will um, i will say to the animals out there what are you guys looking at your face <laughs> you yeah, we'll say it's one of the cats, and um, the cat says, "We are hunting for mice in the fields." Insight check on the cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inside the cat. Natural twenty. <laughs> That'll be the only one I roll. This is a lying cat. Lying, lying cat. You were sitting out here to watch the the track, weren't you? Maybe. <laughs> and then what? they they you they like just back up and and start to run away. I, I, what if? Okay. Um, I was gonna offer you food, but all right. You could try to grab one if you want. One well, of the cats. Yeah, you try to wrangle. I'm not getting cats. scratched up by a cat. That's though. why we brought salt. Yeah, I say have salt chase those cats away. I actually yeah, I'll tell actually... salt. I'll say salt. Can you go chase these cats away? Keep them busy for us. Salt looks like you gave him the the greatest. But when I call no. you back, you need to come back. Wow, wow, okay. She just bolts. Into All dogs town. sound like Scooby Doo, you know. That's yeah. right. Yeah. You huh. give him the greatest honor. Yes. <laughs> yes, Pac Mate. And he, he runs <laughs> after the cats. The, the, probably like the fastest you've ever seen him go because he's a big, lazy. Um, he's probably a big, lazy, like bull mastiff. And they mm-hmm. just like to lounge. And he joyfully chases the cats away. All right. I think we're clear. Yeah. Look around if you don't see anyone. No. Begin the mission, I suppose. All right. So you guys do the heat metal, the hammering. Then you guys get out of here. I'll thunder wave it. All right. And then I'll change yep. and get out of here. Yeah. And and uh, Trebar will touch Vargos on the shoulder and cast Long Strider. So for the next have, hour, you have an extra 10 feet movement speed. I will uh, touch you on the sh- I'll touch Pappy on the shoulder, and I will cast Long Strider on Pappy, too. Nice. <laughs> and then I can Expeditious Retreat myself. Okay, so right. while you're doing the, um, the thing, so Grand- Grandpa Pappy, you, you heat the metal... And then I will cast Bardic Inspiration on um, um, Kraybor, because he's yeah. the one who actually has to do skills here. I just have to cast to, uh, for hammering. Yeah. So, uh... Plus D8. <clears throat> yeah. All right, so a 19 and an 8 plus 6 to hammer the metal. Mm-hmm. So 33. Oh, yeah, I'd say that's <laughs> very effective. And then with uh, expeditions with all your spells, you guys like kind of just 
skedaddle into the, the darkness and Vargos is left alone. You guys should, uh, and I will, I'll give like a whistle out for, for uh, Salt to catch it back up to everybody. He comes back. To okay. join them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Go with them. Go with them. He, he follows. And I kind of look around, and then I, I want to aim it to where it doesn't damage the rest of the ground, just the, you know, okay. like right up on sure. it. Boom, like downward into it, so that way the damage is just to the, the bar itself. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so I will do that, and then I will turn, and I'll start running, and then turn into an animal to okay. continue running. Okay. So that way. So that would, and the animal I'll turn into, I need something with speed. Turn into a panther. Uh, kind of okay. <laughs> yeah. Gotta go fast. You guys, <laughs> I'd say just with the 33 and all of your spells you use, you managed to get away. Um, look at his split. And you and the guys are now back at the house. Um, mission accomplished. We did it, boys. <laughs> yeah. And Salt's such a good boy. <laughs> Salt's a little intimidated now that you're a panther. As soon as, we, <laughs> as soon as we get back, as soon as we get like far enough away, I turn back to my normal self. How used? Nice I mean, you. he's still not quite used to that. He's just like, oh. he comes over and sniffs you like. It's still me. It's still can't me. Can't trust Salt. them cats. And, and, and he, if you've ever seen a confused dog, they like kind of like tilt their ears back and yeah. <clears throat> do the head tilt. He's very confused, but and the smells don't lie, so he's okay with it. He's most confused <laughs> that you would choose to turn into a cat. All right. Yeah. yeah. yeah like, Fair enough. When you could have chose to cho turn into a dog. Mm -hmm. I just okay. didn't want him to get there. Are you guys ready for the race tomorrow? All right. Yes. I have one, one thing I want to reveal, though. When we, like, all when the montage, when we finally finish the vehicle, mm -hmm. I basically, like, okay, this is going to be at the head of our, of our <laughs> That's going to be our, our figurehead at the front. So. Yeah. So you blew that on, and your, uh, the nom nom is complete. <clears throat> You guys rest <clears throat> for the night and it is the morning of the race. Yep. All right. Anything you'd like to do to prepare for the race? I'm just ready to go. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to think if there's any spells I think that I want to do. I don't think so. Can we cast Long Strider on the car? <laughs> <laughs> the, let's see here. I will give uh Everybody guide, well, because I think you only do it one at a time, right? Yeah, it's a concentration. Yeah. And it only lasts a minute. So, whoever's going to go first as the driver, I'm going to give it to them, which should probably be Grandma, right? Because I think Grandma should do the first leg. Okay. Okay. All right. Because right, she was going to be one of the drivers, right? Yeah. And then I can do the second leg. And that way, Grandpa on the third leg who finishes, I can give him guidance as well. So I can give guidance to all of us. And I'm going to give uh, heroism to all of us. I'll do it at uh, so fourth level. Who's going to be the wheel changer one and two? Who's the strongest? I'm probably the strongest. Then that I, 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 I think I have a 15. Gum, Gum what do you have? For, for I have an eight. Oh, well, then I'm stronger than you. I have a 10. Yeah, so I can set myself up for Expeditious Retreat and Longstrider to do the driver running. Well, we but got Grandma on can... we, got, we got Grandma doing that. Well, because we need, there's three, right? And the third person needs to be able to run to keep up. Well, no, we don't need to do that anymore because we got Grandmother to, to do the, the first leg of the oh, race. Oh, oh, we... all right. So, I mean, I guess I could do the wheels at the, at the, at the Grandpa's thing. So I can give it to Grandma, and then I'll be the wheel changer where, Grand, where Grandpa is. Right? That way I can give it to him on the last letter. I, just won't be able to give, I won't be able to give guidance to the second person. So whoever's the second driver, which would probably be you since uh, dad will be the wheel changer at the first station. Whoever's okay. the driver in the second race, then I could give 
Well, I could give Bardic Inspiration. It'll last for 10 minutes, which should last for, the, uh, they could use it once during the whole heat. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay, so you guys go down to the heat, the race. The whole town is gathered for this. I mean, um, well, yeah. It's like the biggest thing in town. The whole, like, the whole town, like, shops aren't even open because everyone's there. Um, you see rows and rows of temporary stalls, so like merchandise, get your roasted corn, get your ale, get your turkey legs. There are denizens of the turkey town legs. who have, um, like, face paint on for the, the color scheme of their team that they support. Does anybody support us? <laughs> no. They're... <laughs> I don't know, maybe. Some of the kids might, because some of the kids like us. That one daughter. Yeah, Roxia. <laughs> one, right. Roxia has, like, a little tiny flag of you mm -hmm. guys. Shortly before the races start, maybe ten minutes before, I'm going to cast Sea Invisibility, so I can just monitor for any other deceptions <laughs> that could be going on with our great okay. enemy. You know what I think? You examine them, you watch them like a hawk, you don't see any of okay. their mischief. Okay. There's definitely some mischief. You said Roxanne has our flag? That family changed it out for a Dolomite flag and she has no idea. Yeah, she has oh. no idea. She... <laughs> you watch as Taryn, um, like, runs into her, so she kind of, she's like, oh, sorry, Taryn, and she drops it, and he's like, here's your flag back, and he gives her a Dolomite flag. <laughs> what a jerk. Yeah. That family dolomites. Dolomite. <laughs> <laughs> and the burgermeister appears in front of the crowd. He goes onto like a little stage and they mostly ignore him until he gets to this like kind of magic amplifier and says, Hello, residents <clears throat> of the village. Welcome to this year's derby. Rah! We've had a rough year, but let's put aside old wounds and have a good show. And he drones on for a little bit, and everyone's like, oh. and then he's, and this is the trophy, and they're like, yeah, and you get a winning pot of twenty thousand one hundred forty-eight gold. Thank you for all who contributed to the pot. Now, racers, go to your spots, and so there's this buzz of excitement, and everyone goes to their their spots. You see the Reggie Rockets and the Bad Babes, as well as a number of other kart racers and the Dolomites. The Nom Noms. Who's who? Oh, there's five Dolomites that aren't there. Yeah, but one's blind. <laughs> yeah, but it's those. Those are the Dolomites, the ones doing the racing. Um, three, uh, four, four out of five of them. Are racing. Oh, the, the yeah. parents aren't racing? Um, no, they're not. Okay. So, we're gonna uh, start off with who Good. the first racer. So this is gonna be grandma. a number of skill checks. Grandma, go, Grandma, go. I give oh, her yeah. guidance. Which number is Cliff? Cliff I give is... Her... Cliff is the change. He's the first changer. Okay. If yeah, she has a D four to whatever she rolls, because I give her a guidance. So, Grandma, you got this, and I tap her on the shoulder. Oh shit! She did pretty good. Cool. Okay. She uh, she hops in and um, nods to you. You're like, okay, okay. Yeah, this is this isn't so bad. <laughs> and um, you watch with intensity as she goes around the um, the first loop, and she she's doing really well. And um, she has to, so she's doing a, a good job in terms of controlling the vehicle. And her con check is actually also pretty good. Oh, she, her con check is a sixteen, so she manages to tough it out, and. Um, by the time she comes to the first changing station, she gets out and her, she kind of like wobbles out like, oh, it's a good thing I kept doing Pilates all these years. <laughs> she goes and just kind of like sits down. So who is going to do the first change? Dad. All right, Dad, oh, you're up. <clears throat> so, it's, um, just, it's... Dad distracted, 
doing an activity and can't pay attention to me. I mean, you're you're on the third leg. You're on the third leg. Oh, I'm not anywhere near the changers. I'm down the track. Yeah, yeah a little yeah. further down. Yeah. Damn it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah, so much for not so much for trying to cheat. Okay, so, start it. <laughs> so this, it's a strength check now to be able to pull the tires off quickly and put them on. Is that what it is? Uh, tinkers check or dex. Oh, tinker. Check. Okay. <clears throat> and then a strength check. So you get two, and then we'll basically add them. The final number. Okay. So tinkers check. Which? What's my tinkerer? It it would just be. It would probably be your. Is it, isn't it like a performance? No, not performance. So Tinker I'm Tools go... is usually uh, your it's intelligence great. plus your uh, proficiency. Okay. As long as you're proficient with them. Okay, so my intelligence roll. Uh, a 10. Okay, do a 10. All right, and That's do my your That's standard. That's standard. Your, strength? Uh, strength, yeah. Nice. Dirty 20. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So that's a total of 30. So with your decks, you know, you're used to these these tools and doing this. And, you know, if, if those of you who can pay attention to Cliff, he's pretty fast doing this. But Benji is faster as yeah. he slips ahead by three points. And um, so you get like a basically a prop, uh, like a three second lead. And so he changed the tires. And uh, next up is the second driver. Okay. That's your driver. That's me. Uh, so a 22 for intelligence check to drive. You have bardic inspiration you can add after the fact, I believe, to any one roll, right? <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to use that for my saving throw, the con save, right? Uh, so con save is a 16. All right, so what's the collective thing? Is a 16 and a 22, right? Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, 19 plus 3. Oh, nice. Yeah, so yeah. 22 for intelligence, and then... Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So you, um, you're you driving up against Terran, and um, mm. he's, he's a little bit younger than you. He's a good driver. You're better. Good. Yeah, you're better. Super like, it comes Terran. close to, like, you see this... Um, Super Terran. It comes to a part where you have to do, like, a drift... And what you do is you just, you, you know exactly how to drift. You drift around him as you like scoot around the outside and get ahead of him. And do you give him the off. bird when you do it? Drifting you around in a just, derby. That's I just awesome. yell at him and just be like, I can't believe you took your sister's flag. <laughs> <laughs> Drifting in a derby though? That's pretty awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next up, we uh, so you come to the second changer, come to a stop. So now we have uh, now you're up against <clears throat> Aurea. All right, all right, wheel changing. So tinkers plus that, I will clap my hands together as they're coming up and give myself guidance real quick. <laughs> <laughs> and ooh, seventeen plus three is 20 okay and then plus the guidance plus one so 21 okay and then what else do i make another one? string check right mm -hmm. all right uh that will be a 13 flat uh yeah 13 flat so i probably wouldn't have time unless i'd have time to give myself guidance for that too <laughs> It doesn't matter because Aurea okay. is bad at what she's doing. <laughs> okay. Awesome. She rolled a two <laughs> and an 18. So oh she, uh, her collective roll was 20 and then your collective roll is like over 30. So how are yeah. the other racers doing? Yeah. Um, they um... <laughs> don't exist. 
You're drifting yeah, Flintstone I style. Yeah, I rolled a seven and a four. So um, the the bad babes are unfortunately in last place, and the Reggie Rockets are in second to last. <laughs> it's like there's a you know there's probably like other racers, but those are the ones to look for. Um, I will walk up to grandfather as as I get the tire set and like say like he's good to go. You're good to go, and I tap you on the shoulder and give you guidance. All right, grandpa. You got this, grandpa. You know, you know, Vargas. I, I did you hear that purse? That could like change our lives if we won that. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> let's talk about it later. Go, 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 oh, grandpa. <laughs> All right. You have guidance. You can choose when to use it too. So okay. it's a D four that you add. All right. <clears throat> What do I need to do? You need to roll. Um, you have advantage. Oh, not advantage. So you have vehicle proficiency. So um, you can add. Um, proficiency? Yeah, yeah. So roll your intelligence plus your proficiency with a d20. OK. Grandpa's an ulterior motive. Here it goes. Intelligence plus proficiency on D20. I rolled a two. Uh, proficiency adds three. I'm a jack of all trades. Another plus one. So six. Okay. Plus the part of, uh, and plus my uh, inspiration. Uh, his uh, the inspiration or the guidance. 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 Plus four. I don't so... use that at this point. Okay. All right. And what's all the right. other? And the other Me. one is. The other one is a con save because you are pedaling. All right. Con save. Thing death. <laughs> I, rolled, I rolled a 14. I get a plus three on my con, so that's okay. 17. Okay. Plus the guidance. How far are we? How close is it at this point with the uh, with the Dolomites? They, um, they're, you guys have basically beat their rolls in every single check in, until this point. So you do have a pretty good head start above them. Okay. Just, just finish I, it, Grandpa. I want to crash the car into the Dolomite car, taking us both out of the race. Uh, okay. Okay. So, um, that's what I'd like to do. And here's, right. and, and I want to use the magic that Vargas gave me to do my driving skill to make it look like it was a total accident instead of the, the planned event that I wanted to be. Okay. Make a deception check. <laughs> plus, <laughs> plus so the I'm D4. Plus, I'm plus seven on deception. Plus a D4. I rolled a three though. So 10 plus a D4. Now about that nitroglycerin, I hit in total, the car. Total of 12. Oh, okay. Um, we'll say that what happens is um, you like have to slow down a little for the Dolomites to catch up to you, and you're driving against Cliff, and mm -hmm. um, he, he, he kind of gives you this weird look like, why are you slowing down? And then he he sees you getting ready to like ram into him, so he actually just moves out of the way. And um, you you still have like a you know you can the last leg of the race is ahead of you. Why didn't you just win it, Grandpa? That's what Vargas is yelling. Like, Why? It is Go! mine. He's like the last couple of days have been so amazing with the family. He doesn't want it to. He doesn't want his life to change. He sees that things can be good, and the money's gonna ruin everything. It was the purse prize that changed his mind. He's really conflicted. He's gonna, he, but he doesn't want the Dolomites to win. So he'll he'll instead try and block. He's actually now gonna just block the Dolomites' car, hoping another racer can beat them. Or we can just beat them and give the money away <laughs> to the town. That's not how money works. <laughs> and um okay so you 
try to to block him and um we'll definitely do... i will win i will win rather than let the dolomites win but i'm hoping one of these lamos can actually beat us okay i will um let me just see what we got. So the Reggie Racers are, are third. Um, okay, the the Reggie Racers rolled a nineteen, and um, the Dolomites rolled a seventeen. So Grandpa Cogs just rolled a twenty. That's all you need. Happened. A twelve. Okay, so you um, you you try to get them, you try to just stay ahead of them out of the way, but when because you were distracting Cliff, you gave the Reggie Racers enough time to just kind of scoot ahead of you guys, and they pull a last second win. <laughs> yeah. Oh. My God. And the crowd goes wild, and they're like, oh, what a dark horse winner! We got the Reggie Racers! (laughs) And and the boys step out, and they're like, yeah! They go and just kind of, like, chest bump each other, and they're a bunch of, like, just, like, gangly teens. You know, they... Got me that money. (laughs) (laughs) You ruined their lives, Grandpa, with all that money. I love this, though, so... For anybody who doesn't know, Reggie is the name of my mascot on stream. <laughs> <laughs> so they they win, and um, Grandma greets you guys at the end of the race, and she she looks at you, and she says, "Paps, what happened?" I just I don't know. After all these years, I just didn't want to change. I'd rather be two ninety eight than be a different person. Well, the Dolomites didn't win. Which is amazing. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> it is. Who needs to win as long as they lose? It's the first step in beating them is making sure they don't win. Next step, win. Next step, don't put Grandpa as the last leg of the race. Definitely not. <laughs> He'll start from now on. Uh, Grandma no. kick butt. We should make her the leg of the race. <laughs> Bonnie did amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it was fun. I, it was a lot more fun than I, I thought it would be. I had no idea what to expect. But, oh, I had such a rush doing it. <laughs> <laughs> and you see, it's Cliff. Okay, Cliff, he, he takes his helmet off and he throws it on the ground. He's all mad. <laughs> uh, the helmet breaks. Um, and so you guys see your opportunity to potentially expose them. Oh, yeah. I immediately like, hey. walk over and go, Oh my gosh, there's a magnet inside your helmet. What is this? Can we get a referee over here on this? And uh, No time to wait for them to hide or anything. It's like immediate jump on it. Yeah. The Burgermaster comes over and looks at it. He says, well, why? This is a magnet. And he, then Cliff gets really just, um, uh, And so basically they're exposed, they're forever banned from the Derby and um, they cannot win any of the money. They're publicly shamed. (laughs) Good. And- um, I think I knew to do a con check to not die immediately of happiness. (laughs) I ask if I can see the magnet for a second. What was this gonna magnetize to? And I walk over and I check things and I go to the bar and go, Mm -hmm. Nope, it doesn't stick to that. I don't know what it was, but they were definitely cheating. But I want them to know that the bar was not working. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so, you guys, um, that about concludes it. The, um, the crowd rushes the Reggie Rockets. They're lauded and applauded. They're given the trophy and the coin money. Awesome. Good for them. Coin purse. And um, what do you guys want your epilogues to look like? Well, those are good kids, but they're not as good as mine. <laughs> I think that maybe the Reggie Rockets, we talk to them and congratulate them. We kind of know that Grandpa 
help them get the win. Yeah. And maybe maybe they help. You maybe too, Trayvar. You go congratulate the ones who won. Maybe it'll be us next year. Next year. I mean, we do get... Trayvar, it's nothing but nitroglycerin and black powder for days. <laughs> you know, <laughs> even though they can't run in the derby, there's also... There's always the kite competition uh, in the spring. The Dolomites can compete in that, so there are places to win. <laughs> and that concludes the very busy summer of the Coggs family. So, thank you. Happy Father's Day. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank, thank you, you, Tiffany, for running. It was great to play with all of you. Yeah, you're welcome. And beautifully, the stream went nice the whole way. No audio, yeah. nothing. God. Yeah. Yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. It's something I like doing on my uh, uh, games is I go around to each player and ask them what was something that they liked that another player did. I okay. like I like that gum literally right off from the beginning blew a hole in the side of the house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that really showed right from the start the type of gnome that he was. Hey, Trayvar yeah. knows what he's about. Trayvar is Trayvar all about destruction. Priorities. <laughs> I do yeah. like that. Um, I also like that Grandpa Cogs actually had an actual statue. <laughs> that was awesome. Oh, rock notes, right? We have to do what? stuff. It, it, it wasn't right. my best work. You're right. That was definitely not my best work. Yeah, it's probably like your first <laughs> statue or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, who's ever ready to go next? You can. I I can appreciate Zealzaddy's step into the light discomfort of wooing and distracting someone with his <laughs> gnomish looks. <laughs> yeah. I actually I actually appreciated the entire being humor so much. And the fact that it just kept going and going and going. <laughs> and and um, I can't say the spell right, but uh, prestidigitation? Yep. It's a fantastic spell for like uh, just all sorts of things. I never yeah. thought about using it for stench. Yeah. Oh yeah, there's so much. Um, a couple of people have done like the top 100 uses. Nice. And, like you can instantly soil your opponent's clothes to make it look like they wet they themselves. Wet themselves. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Um, and it, uh, Scott. Oh my God! I first off, I loved the um, incredible interaction during the with the boys and the grandpa during the breaking and entering. <laughs> it was a really fun. Uh, it felt like an '80s movie, like <laughs> like those '80s movies were just so cheesy and bad, but they were great because of it. It was just goofy and funny and fun. Um, and I, I love that stuff, especially on one shots. It's, I mean, that's when you can just kind of break loose and be like goofy. I also, I really appreciated Pappy coming clean with like some, uh, respect at the end, at least for the, for the fathering part. <laughs> yeah, I actually, seriously, it was like, um, uh, the whole way it was plotted out. It was like, he changed. He's like, he didn't, he, he didn't, he was happy with where things were going who knows what was going to happen with this <coughs> he's just like that is so much money that's going to completely change everything and he couldn't deal with that he would rather have see where this path was going to lead than have this money come in and do it all and he wasn't he was smart enough to know that money would change it he wasn't wise enough to figure out you could just give it away <laughs> So, yo, yeah. biz, wisdom was this guy's dump stack. I, I uh, <laughs> characters in the campaign, so you can check them out. So, <laughs> let's see. I enjoyed a lot of elements. I liked being Dorothea and being very uncomfortable. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> I I liked the. I did like the uh, the house. I liked how you guys handled the the mastiffs. Um, gotta love the the dog gags. Um, and I like how you involved salty salt. <laughs> yeah. So like I actually wrote um, how I their their old dog was Pepper who passed, and I was gonna have 
um, Bonnie asked about Pepper, and then, uh, like, one of you could mention, oh, Bonnie, uh, that Pepper passed, but we have a new dog named Salty, or Old Salty, <laughs> and then, like, Tom just had Grandpa Cog say, yes, we have a dog named Salt now. <laughs> I mean, I oh, man, saying. that would be a good setup. Old Salty, we named it after you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That to grandpa. <laughs> so, well, I, I had a blast. You guys were great. And... Yeah, thank you. And thank you for staying up so late, you guys on the East Coast. I, I was... Yeah. yeah. Normal, night Normal night for me. Normal night for me. Thank you for running, now... by the way. That was awesome. I, right, I think those are a lot of fun, what, what you do with the holiday things. It's hey. very all, cool. All, all I know is now I kind of want to play a Rogue Druid. <laughs> do it. I, I really want to add a town that has a derby in it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that came from you guys, so that's cool. I want to add a town that has a kite festival. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, thanks for watching, right. everyone. Thank you, everybody. For joining us. Yeah. Good night. Bye, everybody. Have a good night. Night. Bye. Happy Father's Day. Happy yeah, Father's Day, too, guys. Thanks for playing.